You're good to go. Okay. <clears throat> good evening, uh, Cohasset. I'm Jack Creighton, chair of the Cohasset Select Board. Welcome to the open select board meeting of Tuesday, July 26th, uh, 2022. Just for your information, tonight's meeting will be conducted on, on the Zoom platform and live streamed on Cohasset 143 and Cohasset's Facebook page. The public is invited and encouraged to participate on the Zoom platform. It can be accessed by the link that's at the top of the posted agenda for tonight's meeting, which can be found on our Cohasset Mass web, web page. Members of the board and other scheduled participants will be able to participate when called on by the chair. Board members will be able to ask questions of any participants. All votes taken at this meeting will be by roll call. If you are participating, you must first identify by your name and address. Members of the public who wish to ask questions after the name and address are asked to raise their virtual hands on Zoom and at the discretion of the chairs will be promoted into the meeting. Again, you must provide your full name and address for the public record. Please note that comments on platforms other than Zoom will not be monitored. This meeting is being recorded and will be available for later viewing on Cohasset 143. We customarily start these meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. Is there any member of the select board who'd like to lead us? Okay, I will lead us. You may uh, use the flag, it's in the corner of my screen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As it's our custom, we start all of our meetings with a public comment period. It's with items that are not on the agenda. Anybody can speak. Um, however, when you bring it up, there'll be no discussion on that because it's not officially on the agenda. The board at its discretion may decide to take up the issue at a different meeting, but understand you may speak, but there'll be no discussion and nobody will comment upon that. Um, Tracy, do we have anybody who'd like to speak? No public comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to license permits and events. Okay, we have the McCourt Foundation tour to South Shore. Tracy, can you give us an update on that? Or uh, I see our police chief, Bill Quigley, is here. And hey Jack, we should probably open the, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I see everybody here. We do have to uh, have a roll call. Um, those attendants, identify yourself. Starting with Jean. Jean Healy Dippelt here. Diane. Diane Kennedy here. Corey. I think you're muted, Corey. But we can lip read. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Paul Grady. Paul Grady here. Okay. Um, the um, Tracy, do you have the uh, information on the McCourt Foundation's tour to South Shore on 925? So the chief, I think Chief Quigley is going to discuss that. Okay. Hey, good evening, board. I see um, Joe is there the McCourt Foundation, and um, I'll let him uh, give an overview. But um, for the board's um, uh, review is is the um, the annual McCourt. Uh, toward the South Shore. It's going to occur on um, Sunday, 925-22. Starts around 7.30 a.m. and the impact will be done in Cohasset around noontime. And Joe can talk about the course. It does start in Hingham at Wampatuck State Park, winds through Hingham, Cohasset, Situate, Norwell, and back into Wampatuck. Um, so the, the, the real impact to Cohasset is minimal. Um, I, I have met with the town events team. I've, you know, uh, people have you know, the police, the yeah, fire chief and um, DPW have signed off. Those departments impacted have signed off. I do have the insurance binders. The application fee has been paid. And um, 
I'll turn it over to Joe. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joe Castellaneta. I am the Senior Operations Manager from the McCord Foundation. Um, thank you very much, Chief, for that. Um, as he stated, we are starting in Wampatuck State Park. Uh, we will go through Cohasset starting on Jerusalem Road um, and basically going through and turning onto uh, Gannett Road in Situate, and that's a um, pretty minimal um, intrusion in Cohasset. We will be ending again in Wampatuck State Park. Uh, it's two loops that you're able to do. It's either a 25 mile loop or a 50 mile loop. Um, 50 miles is just the same loop twice and uh, no changes to the course as was same course as last year, uh, same operations team. So everything is the same. Okay. And, and just um, to, to be clear, it's gonna uh, come, come through West Corner. It's gonna come down Kilby Street in Hingham, take a right on Rockland Street, cross over onto Jerusalem Road. It's gonna uh, traverse Jerusalem Road, past Wadley Park, past Forest Ave, along the shore, up to Margin Street and out Border Street. And that'll be, uh, the extent of the impact in Cohasset. Mm -hmm. Any comments from the board? Is there any comments from the audience? Okay, it seems, uh, um, would somebody uh, like to make a motion? Sure, I'll do it. Um, I move that we approve, um, hang on a second, I'm gonna move Chief my- Chief just threw his hand up. Oh, sorry. Um, just one thing of formality, there is a, an event fee and they are requesting a, a waiver on the event fee um, because they are a 501 so I don't know if the board wants to consider that or not, but. Um, okay, I, I think I'll, I'll make the motion um, separate for that and then we can discuss that. Um, so I move that we approve the McCourt Foundation's Tour to South Shore for Sunday, September 25th, 2022, the bike riding 5K through Cohasset from 7.30 a.m. to approximately 1 p.m. I'll second it. We have a motion uh, made and seconded to uh, approve the McCourt uh, uh, thing for um, September 25th. Is there any uh, further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, I call the vote. Jean? Jean Haley Dippledar. Diane? Diane Kennedy, aye. Corey? Cravens, aye. Paul. Paul Grady, aye. Jack Grayton, aye. Motion carries unanimously. Do we want to have discussion about the size of the fee and whether we should waive it? What is the size of the fee that we're talking about? I believe it's $100. Joe, why should we waive the fee? <laughs> this uh, is your well, we... <laughs> chance to shine. Yeah, we are a nonprofit um, raising money for neurological disorders and, and trying to find a cure. Um, we appreciate you guys having us back. That's, I'll just leave it at that. So thank you very much. We're looking forward to working with you all again. Paul? I would suggest we waive it, Jack. I'm familiar with this foundation. They're, they do a good thing. Okay. Any other comments? Diane? I'm obviously in favor of, of waiving the fee as well as, as a professional fundraiser, but I, you know, I think typically one of the things we do discuss, and I think in this case, they're literally just riding through. It's not like they have stations. They're not taking up, you know, the common for half a day or something. So I, I think this is absolutely the, the kind of event we should waive the fee for. So I'll make a motion that we um, waive the um, event application fee. I'll, I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion made and second to waive the $100 event fee for the McGort Foundation Tour to South Shore. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, I call the vote. Jean? Jean Haley Diffel Dye. Diane? Diane Kennedy, aye. Corey? Corey Evans, aye. Paul? Paul Brady, aye. Jack Wright and I, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Joe, and uh, best of luck to you guys. Thank you all very much. Looking forward to being in your beautiful town again. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have another thing for St. Uh, Stephen's Picnic. This is a major uh, event. It will impact all streets. Um, just kidding. This is uh, the St. Stephen's annual picnic. It's a very small footprint. Um, it is on uh, the, the Jason Road side of the common. On, you know, near the War Memorial. It is on September 11th, 2022, Sunday, September 11th, 2022, 9.30 a.m., probably till about noontime, actually. Um, again, this is an annual event. 
myself and Chief Doc Ray have uh, met virtually with yeah. the organizers, and uh, we're good with it. There's very little impact. Um, the only thing that, uh, and actually, I'm not sure is, uh, do we have anybody in the waiting room that's represented the state, St. Stephen's, Tracy? I don't see anybody, Chief. I was looking for Magiano, but I don't see her in the waiting room unless there's somebody else. Uh, it could be Kennedy, Lauren Kennedy. Who is it? Who else, Chief? Could be Kennedy, last name Kennedy. I don't see anybody. Okay. They, 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 yeah, they, um, they, they had a little bit of scheduling issues, but we did meet with them um, last Thursday. And uh, again, very little impact. Um, the only caveat is they're looking for a bouncy house um, and they have to uh, apply through the building department for permits for that. Again, it's on um, that, 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 that very small portion of the, um, the common to the right adjacent road. Uh, but we, we don't foresee much impact uh, to anything here. And uh, we, we recommend um, going forward with this. And the bouncy house is entirely up to the building committee, doesn't require our approval. Is there any discussion on this matter? Diane. Just a quick question, Chief. Is there is there space on that? property now that we have those permanent um, tables for the bouncy house there, or do you think they'll need the common? Um, no, they're definitely not going to use the common. Okay. Um, that, that was, you know, the, um, the understanding. And we may have to, you know, they, they may have to move the tables a little bit, then replace, put everything back when they're done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Diane, you're looking forward to the bouncy house, I see, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, nothing I like more than a bouncy house. I, I can see the gleam in your eye. I'm impressed. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. I'll, uh, Chair will entertain a motion. I'd make a motion that we approve the St. Stephen's annual picnic event Sunday, September 11th, 2022, 9.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. as specified in their application. Second. We've had a motion made and seconded to approve the St. Stephen's picnic on 9-11-2022 as, as it has just been described. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, um, I call the vote. Uh, Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Paul. Paul Ray, aye. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Jean. Jean Healy, Diputat. Jack Creighton, aye. The motion carries unanimously. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Could I just ask one question of the chief? That is September 11th, and I imagine that we would be having the normal honor um, ceremony at the other end of the common, and maybe we could ask the the St. Stephen's folks to to not set up until that is over, which is usually around 9:20, 9:30. Correct, and, and that's something we considered as well. Um, okay, great. They, they, um, again, they're a very small footprint and um, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're completely respectful of that. And just one other thing, the um, same situation with the event fee for these folks, um, they're requesting a waiver of the fee. They did pay the application fee. Um, McCord also paid the application fee, but they're requesting a waiver because it's really a, it's a, it's a, it's a potluck dinner. You know, there's, no, there's no funding source to pay for this. Well, I'll make a motion to wave, pass the wave the fee. Second. We have a motion uh, to waive the fee on the um, St. Stephen's 9-11 uh, picnic. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, uh, roll call vote, Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Paul. Paul Brady, aye. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Jean. Jean Healy, double die. Jack Creighton, aye. Motion carries unanimously. Um, we, we look forward to, I won't say it, Diane. I won't. <laughs> okay. Um, local official bound, uh, bond, the town clerk. Um, Chris, could you uh, explain how much and what's behind this? So um, now that we have a new clerk, um, Lisa, Lisa Legg, she needs to be bonded. And um, Lisa correctly pointed out that it says that the, the governing board sets the bond. Now it's historically been $30,000, which it would be now. Uh, it just, we just haven't had to be clean since she's the new clerk. It's, it, we've just, we checked it would be a good idea for the board to officially vote 
uh, to uh, uh, to set the bond amount at thirty thousand dollars for the town clerk, and then she'll finish the application, and we'll be done. Okay. Uh, any discussion? So just just clarification: I, we're setting we're we're just setting the fee or the the bond the, the amount of the amount of the bond, right? And then, and then it gets processed. It's all ready to go. It just needs the official vote of the board. So mm -hmm. I need Jack just to sign a piece of paper at some point saying the board voted to set the amount at 30,000. And that's what it's historically been. So um, we're not changing the amount. That's good. There's just been, there's been no select board vote for the new clerk. So we thought it would be make sense to have that. Yeah, that's, that's prudent. Um, any other discussion? Chair will entertain a, mo uh, a motion. I move to set the bound, the, the bond amount at 30,000 for our new town clerk. Second. Elizabeth Lynch. We have uh, a motion made and seconded to set the bond amount for the new town clerk at $30,000. Is there any further discussion? Um, Is there discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Jean? Jean Healy Dippledine. Already I. Corey. Corey Evans, I. Diane. Diane Kennedy, I. Jack Creighton, I. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, moving on, investment report, um, first and second quarter from our treasurer collector, Paula um, Linhares. And Paula, will this be the last time you report to us? Paul's not on the call yet, so I, I, I'm trying to, she was in, in transit. So, okay. um, uh, and this would be her last official report to you, yes. Um, so I, I'm, let me let me track her down. Um, and um, I don't think I'm running that that far ahead. Uh, I, and we're ahead of schedule. Yeah. <laughs> let me see if I can track her down. No, she was in transit. She's got four minutes. She got stuck in some traffic, so she's just getting home to log on, so she could join in about two minutes. So All right. If you wanna, but she'll be able to join, but she, again, she got stuck in traffic. She'll be on in just a minute, two minutes. Okay, well, we have to wait for her because we're eight minutes ahead of schedule. It's a trend that we should encourage and move forward. So we're not here till 11, 30, 12 o'clock, which has happened. Is there another item we want to address in the interim? Um, There's, there isn't anything brief enough that we could um, get to without going into that portion. And I've already looked at that, but it's a great idea, Jean. But by the time we, we do that and wait for her, we're better off waiting for her. I do see, well, Glenn's on the call, um, the Veterans Waterfront Park update. Yeah, but I don't think we- um, It's a big move. I'm just saying if he's here, we can let him be there, have the rest of his evening. Um, that's at 830. So if people are interested in that, I don't want to open and close it before they could look at it. And it may, it's a, it's a pretty neat thing. And there may be some interest in that. Understood. How about electronic minutes? Um, do we have that on the, I don't Think. That, that won't do anything. The, the you know the, <laughs> the update we is. Can knock uh, it off. We're working on <laughs> yeah, it. But I can say that at nine o'clock too. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's an update. Yeah, I know. <laughs> ah, solution. Uh, chair wants people to know that um, we we just were un uh, unable to get the electronic minutes discussion, get the the needed background information. 
So um, it has been pulled off from the agenda. So, Hold on. so <clears throat> that was 60 seconds. What else do we have? <laughs> well, it's a little cooler today than it has been all week. I'll say that. That is yes, good. It has. <laughs> yes, it has. So, uh, um, select board member Grady, are you proposing that the select board take responsibility for the accuracy of weather reports? No, it's not too accurate. <laughs> We had a nice rainstorm. We didn't get it. My son got mad at the weatherman for making the weather. I was like, that's not how that works. But <laughs> it was funny. So now you can tell them you're on the select board and then you can blame somebody. You can make a motion, won't do anything, but okay. I do recall that weathermen, I felt I feel like when I was growing up, weathermen often got blamed for wrong reporting. As yes. Technology has advanced. There's been less blame going on for the weathermen. <laughs> well, that line of thunderstorms that we were supposed to get all day yesterday I didn't get yeah. anything. I was we changed our plans like seven times, and you know. I saw you out there. You were you were the guy holding that kite with the string with a key in the jar. Yeah, I was moving around big metal pipes all day. It was. It was That's what I, I. You know, I drove by us to say, Corey. You know, it's not a good idea. We need you on the select boards. Trying to bring some energy to the discussion. Yes. I'll see myself. Uh, oh. All right. Uh, <laughs> no comment. No comment whatsoever. The 840 item, Corey. <laughs> right. That's 840. Right. All right. We call you Sparky. <laughs> I, I don't think me being, yeah, I think that's a that's a non-renewable uh, resource. <laughs> I need to get my light. We can do select board comments now. I think we really need to stay in there. I, I uh, you know, there's people who really do watch this and it's important and they want to come back when they want to come and go. And um, much as I'm tempted to anything to do to uh, abbreviate the meeting, um, I know we'll hear if we, um, but I'll waive my select board comments. Well, I think we can while we're discussing that. Um, Chris, can you give us an update on the replacement process for Paula? Sure. Um, uh, we actually have two finalists that we're meeting with in interviews this week and next. Uh, uh, so we're hoping uh, to be able to have one of them selected by next week. That's the plan. Um, and Paula has been, uh, is arranged to stay with us. Uh, I think we're doing at least one day a week for the next month to help facilitate the transition. Uh, so uh, uh, her new employer is being gracious and, and she wants to make a smooth transition too. So we have that all pretty much tied down. So we're comfortable that we'll be a good stead she and Don have also been communicating on year and closeout. So I think they're, they're doing well on that. So Paula is still acting. So we're going to have two acting uh, um, uh, consulting uh, finance folks that will help us tie up our year end FY22 and challenge into the new team in 23. So. Well, I see Paula is there. It's not on video yet, but I do see her. She is. Is she on video? Yes. Here, working on it. Working on up. Oh, she's getting there. There we go. Hi, Paula. Paula, before we get into your report, you know, I think the select board on behalf of the town wants to thank you for the absolutely top level service you've given the town of Cohasset. You know your stuff, you give us good reports. It makes it a lot easier to keep track of our finances when we know we're in capable hands. So you will be greatly missed. Well, thank you. It's been fun. That's good. Right. Um, so now tell us that all of our money's gone, but. 
Yeah, they, they haven't been the greatest of quarters by any stretch. Um, yeah. uh, you know, as you, you probably uh, have guessed, I don't know if you want me to run through both the reports or uh, I could give you the highlights from March. Uh, like overall, uh, we lost uh, almost 600,000 between all the all the different accounts. Um, but we were, uh, let's see, we were negative um, for the quarter, um, but positive for longer time periods. And that still remains to be true. Um, this quarter, this quarter now, um, we're still negative for, for everything, but, uh, again, long-term we're still on the positive and, um, in many cases we're beating our benchmarks and, uh, and sometimes running a little bit behind at the moment. Um, but I'm sure in time as we make the adjustments, um, we'll do well. We've got some good advisors out there helping us out. So uh, exp expendable trusts were down 2.2 um, to 1.9% for the quarter, 4.8 to 3.9 for calendar year to date. They're a little mixed for uh, the year, down 0.9 to up 0.6. And for three years, they're up 3 to 4.9% and up 2.7 to 4.6 for five years, 3.2 to 4.4 4 since the inception. And these expendable trusts are the uh, like the stabilization accounts and money that we could we could spend all of it if we want to so they're um, more heavily in bonds than they would be in equities uh the permanent trusts are a little bit more the other way um they're more like cemetery funds scholarships where we maintain principal, so we can't spend all of it so we can afford to be a little bit more aggressive in in those areas and uh they're down 7.3 for the quarter 10.1 for year to date 5.9 for the year, 4.9 for three years, and up 5.3 for five years, and up 5.9 since its inception in September of 2014. Um, and permanent trust is also in the prudent investor, as is the uh, OPEB, and that's split partially with PRIT and part partially with Bartholomew. Um, so we can maintain some, some control over those investments. We have no say in what PRIT does. Um, but they're down 11.3 to 8.6 for the quarter, down 17.2 to 18, 10.8 uh, for the calendar, down 15.3 to 3.8 for the year, but they're up 3.5 to 8.3 for three years, 4.5 to 8% for five years, 4.3 to 7.4 since again, 2014. So overall, we're, we're, we're still at a loss of almost 800,000. Um, so not great news. But I don't <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. We're not the only one. Hang in there. Uh, you know, right discussion, in the discussion from the board. Diane. I just have a question um, echoing, first of all, what Jack said. Thank you for everything, Paula, over the last many years. Um, but before you go, can you remind us where we stand with Prudent Investor and the um, and the town meeting vote we took a couple of years ago? Um, well, the, the, we, the special act was passed at the, okay. the state, at the state level. So the permanent trust funds, um, so those are the ones that are for like cemeteries, scholarships, where we have to maintain a principal amount and we can only spend the interest and they're for special purposes. Those funds can now be funded using the prudent investor. Previously, they had been with the legal list, which is that short list of very specific stocks that were picked decades ago. Right. That's gone for them. That that still exists for the expendable trusts. Okay. They're still limited by that. Um, we can do bonds and equities from a very short list that's not incredibly diverse. Um, and the other post-employment benefits, that's always been prudent investor. Okay. So that and even in with print now, you can get into to hedge kind of stuff and uh, timber and and real estate and a lot of stuff. And they've, that's a huge fund. That's like 60 some odd billion dollars in that fund. Um, all the state pension is in there and they've got tons of people watching all that stuff and they get into private equity and act, that group actually does pretty well and often has carried that fund, I think in some cases yeah. being yeah. able to get into that, which we wouldn't be able to really do a whole lot with that on our own. So we have exposure to that through print. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Sure.
Uh, <clears throat> is there any, uh, any other questions? Jean. Oh, thank you, Paula. And I echo and Diane and Jax, thanks as well. I really appreciate your concise summaries and handling of our money. Um, I did enjoy Rockland Investments cheerfully optimistic view of the economy <laughs> in their summary <laughs> as well. I don't think there's much to be done other than ride the wave at this point. Um, exactly. I don't think that you would recommend doing anything different than we're already doing. That's my takeaway. I just wanted to reconfirm that. <laughs> yep. Stay the course for now. Yep. yep. Are there any comments from the audience? Okay, um, before we make the motion, we do not have an official thing to vote on a uh, letter of appreciation for Paula, but I don't think we really need one. It's just, I just wanna let the board know that, that, I, that I may write one for the board. It, um, we're not gonna vote on it because it's not on the agenda, but certainly if anybody had an objection to that, I would listen to that. Otherwise, I will probably do that. We have been so fortunate. She's done such a such a uh, you know such a good job. So, anyway, um, the chair chair will um, consider a motion to accept her the treasurer's report. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We've got a a motion to approve and accept the treasurer's report been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, um, I call the vote. Um, Jean? Jean Haley Dippel, die. Diane? Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul? Paul Brady, aye. Corey? Corey Evans, aye. Thanks, Paul. Jack Creighton, aye. Motion carries unanimously, and it's with a, it's a bittersweet moment for the town of Cohasset. But again, Paula, thank you very, very much. Excellent. Well, thank you. And those reports are on the website, by the way. I put them out up earlier, so you're all set. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, select board um, uh, fiscal year twenty three goals. We're discussing a number of things. Um, just a little housekeeping detail on roads and sidewalks. Um, we don't have anything specifically for the sidewalk study. We had discussed that, but Corey was having difficulty getting it done. So we did get a, a proposal from him late this afternoon about some kind of um, committee, which I think we can discuss that proposal. Um, it is in the packet. It was put in there about 530. Um, but it's really been our policy that we'd like to see those things much earlier. Um, and it's not on the agenda for a vote. But um, Corey put some time into it. So that certainly when we get to sidewalks, that will be a, um, you know, part of the discussion. Um, long term financial planning update, just so everybody knows there's and, and Gene will give us more details. One of the, our initiatives was to plan. So we have contacted various um, committee people and chairmen of various boards and committees about long-term financial planning. And, and what does that mean? In a nutshell, that means you look at all the various projects, whether it be a town hall, um, fields, uh, new schools, um, a whole variety of things. And then you calculate what it will cost to pay for them. And then you calculate how you're gonna pay for them, which is very, very important. And part of that process is that as we fund something today, as it wears out, we have to remember that when we have to replace it, which we will, it will cost more to replace it. So it complicates that. We have some very hardworking people working on it. And this is one of our, for people at home, this is one of our things where we as a select board have promised the town that we will figure this out. 
And by the way, if you wonder why we'll be having all kinds of meetings with all kinds of people, it's because it's very difficult. However, we have a very good group of hardworking citizens and volunteers on that. And Jean, if you could give us more details, uh, that would be appreciated. Of course, so just by way of background, the last meeting we had, um, we agreed that we were gonna go forward and try to convene a working group of the chair and vice chair of advisory, the schools, select board, um, capital, and the chair of water and sewers. Uh, sewer commissions. And so um, where we are right now is we've grappled with everyone's schedules and we are going to have that meeting next Monday. And so that will be posted and the public can join um, in efforts to prepare and make the meeting as efficient and productive as possible, including trying to figure out both substance and process. Um, Mike Dick has offered to facilitate and has been extremely helpful, helping me, and I really appreciate that, Mike, who I know is in the audience, um, helping to try to come up with a straw man, just ideas, nothing formal or official, just a way to try to orient the group to move forward. Certainly, if any of my select board colleagues have input they want to give me or Jack, feel free to. Like I said, the meeting next week will be public, but we're trying to um, Mike and I work together to provide as much information ahead of time as possible. And we put our notes from that meeting in the select board packet so you could see what we talked about um, and specifically for the public's edification. Again, we were talking about trying to figure out if there's some straw man goals like protect our AAA rating, for example, um, what a good process would be, and then beginning to create a list of the different projects that we believe are out there, both from a capital standpoint, as well as addressing um, and considering operations as well. And so I, Jack alluded to this, but it's what do we need to pay for? And then the, the next step is, and how do we pay for it? considering not only our financial policies and what we need to do on that front, but is there um, additional revenue sources that we can and should consider? So very preliminary, the group hasn't met yet. Um, that's sort of the update in terms of where we are. Stay tuned for an agenda that's gonna come out shortly in terms of a meeting next week of a working group meeting of that group to begin going through the process and trying to figure out what is the process among other things. Yeah, and I'd like to add one of the things uh, Jean alluded to is our bond rating. It kind of gets a little esoteric, but it's basically our ability to um, borrow at a low interest rate, the lowest possible. And we have, a very, we have the lowest possible rate because we have been fiscally very prudent. And one of the one of the kind of the um, underlying disciplines behind what we are doing on this is to maintain that very high um, bond rating, which requires us to be very, very prudent. So we have to know we can't overspend. And also down the line, the town should be aware that everybody has things that would be good, but just like when you do your household budget, you're going to have to say, well, we'd like to do this, but we need to do that. We can't pay for everything. But what we're hoping to do is to get sufficient information in front of the taxpayers, the voters, um, the, the parents. So when they see what's going on, they'll be able to make a, um, a good decision with good information as to what it really means. So, and again, I, I really think that the people who are participating in this um, owe us a debt of gratitude and we have to be very nice to them, otherwise they'll walk away from the, from the deal. So anyway, um, are there any comments from the board? Diane? Yeah, just um, Jean kind of mentioned it, but I think, you know, one of the things I might have, or I would suggest you consider and kind of building out plans, whether there's certain benchmarks for decision-making. And one of them is finan our financial management policies, because we've been talking for the last probably six years 
first of all, we never had them. <laughs> and then we got them, established them, I think probably six or seven years ago, and we really haven't taken the time to address them. And I think, you know, um, the triple of uh, the bond rating is, is a big piece of that. Um, yes. We. I, have a joke with some friends that, um, you know, what good is the bond rating if you're not borrowing money <laughs> now that, you know, interest rates are <laughs> so high. But anyway, um, so this is great and I uh, look forward to more conversations about it. So thanks. Yeah. Other comments? I want, I'm going to ask every select board member to at least make one comment on that. Start with Corey. Your thoughts on this? Thoughts on what? I mean, give me a specific, I mean, I could talk in circles about this, but if there's a specific thing. No, but I mean, just, is, your, is this in accordance with the vote we had at our select board goals meeting and what we want to go forward with? Yeah, I mean, last meeting we talked about uh, the group of you guys, you know, kind of sitting down and, and banging mm -hmm. out a, a, a next steps and that's how this has to happen. So uh, great, yeah. Good, thank you. Paul? Um, I couldn't be happier. Okay. Diane spoken, Jean spoken. Um, on the long-term financial planning, is there anybody in the audience who'd like to weigh in on this? Okay, we'll move on. Field and courts update. I know there was a very good meeting this morning. Um, Jean, you were there. Um, yes, yeah, so the last we left fields and courts, we were going to, um, try to connect with the rec, rec commission and the schools. And we had a preliminary um, meeting with the rec commissioner, two of the rec commissioners to just give them an update and then see when they would be uh, prepared uh, to provide us with their feedback. And um, the long and short of it is, is that they are meeting in early September um, when they have some new commissioners that have joined and so they're getting up to speed, um, they are going to be joining, they will be reconvening their meetings in early September, and um, they will be providing us feedback on fields and courts, as well as potentially other recreational items that they want to bring to our attention. Um, and one thing that we did ask them for that I asked them to bring up to us was potential options in terms of maybe, you know, if we wanted to go for a short term option that might be a little more feasible financially, do they have a view on that? If we wanted to do a bigger picture project longer term, do they have a view on that? Just so we could have some different options to deal with. So stay tuned, more information coming. And um, we plan to have a similar meeting with the schools just to get some feedback provisionally on um, um, any other comments from the uh, select board? Yeah, I've got, I've got one. I mean, I'd love to be included in those um, as somebody with, that has kids and, you know, in schools and whatnot. So if there's meetings going on with recognition on stuff, you know, obviously it's a high priority for me too. So I'd love to be included in those meetings. Yeah, yeah. and they're public meetings. And by the I, way, that Oh, I just, I didn't know about this one. I, I didn't see anything public. So no, yeah, yeah, I'd, love no. to, I'd love to, you know, yeah. participate, obviously, so. Right. And the people at, at home should know all these are public meetings. And if you go onto the website, you'll be able to see um, all kinds of very interesting public meetings. You're encouraged to attend as many as you'd like, but it is public and that's very important. Was, well, was that public? I'm no, that was not. That was, sorry, Jack. That was not a public meeting. That was a meeting that I had oh, I'm sorry. to figure out the rec commission schedule on this information. And so the public meeting on the substance of what the rec commission is going to talk about, all of that is going to be in early September, once their board has a chance, our commission has a chance to talk awesome. among themselves. Great. So Corey, okay. certainly we'll keep you updated on that. They, they just Great. hadn't had a chance yet to convene on their end. Great, thank you. My apologies, I'd gotten the, uh, the meeting. I assumed it was for a public meeting. Um, anyway, um, any other comments on fields and courts, Diane? Yeah. Just, just, just on that, um, you know, I have heard from people in town that would love to weigh in on it. Obviously, um, especially those with kids. Um, you know, one of the things to, in order to post an agenda and take minutes, you have to have a formal um, 
you know, select board approved working group or committee and or be something that's statutorily set up. So we should probably think about whether and when this rises to the level of a of a, you know, beyond just a couple of people sitting around trying to figure out where to go next and 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 ramp it up um, the public meeting process. So, which well, I'm we'll, highly in favor of. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll certainly keep an eye on that. Frequently, some of these meetings de facto have enough members of boards and committees to create a quorum. But that's a good point, Diane. We'll we'll pay close attention to that. Um, Jean. Well, Corey was ahead of me. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought he just spoke. No, I, I might hand up for the next round. Gene, if you got something oh, on the field, I was going to hop. Oh, All right. oh yeah. I, I just wanted to suggest, you know, one thing we could do is um, like we did with roads and sidewalks and like we're trying to do a zoning, we could have a devoted meeting just on fields um, with, I mean, there's a lot of stakeholders there. And the part of it is just trying to figure out when some of those stakeholders feel like they're prepared to engage on this um, issue and have the necessary background, but I do think that that's something that we've been trying to do with the other goals, so we could certainly do this. I just, I'm not sure we're there yet in terms of the other stakeholders having enough, you know, thinking it through enough yet. That's, and, and I think they'll be there. I think it's just a matter of them needing to re-engage um, on their end. Yeah, we are seeing things come up on, on fields um, one of the things that, that, that came up is that some of where they might would want to put new fields, um, there's some argument that schools need new parking and they would kind of look into the same piece of real estate, potentially just to give the uh, people and the board an idea of the type of things that come up as we get into this, which is healthy because we want these things to come up. Um, the um, Anybody else on the board? Um, by the way, pickleball. Pickleball is part of the discussion. Um, I know the senior center, the social service league is thinking about a, a private pickleball for the seniors. Um, it's clearly very popular for the rest of the town of pickleball. So I just, to avoid you know, the hundreds of phone calls to each and every member of the select board, I want everybody to know that pickleball is in fact part of what under consideration. Okay, um, so roads and sidewalks. Um, if you go on to your, um, under your, um, on the town website, you'll see a very comprehensive listing of all the roads and sidewalks. It's very useful if you want to know where your road looks at. I suggest that you go in there. There's a clickable link and it takes you up to an absolutely delightful 31 page detailed report. Um, we also sidewalk survey. I'll get you in a second, Corey. I know your, your hand is up there. I gotta get, yeah. um, sidewalk survey, we, we asked Jason to see, um, last week we asked him to, to get back to us on that, whether that can be combined with other things. Yeah. We have yet to hear, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We have yet yet to um, get an answer on that. Um, the next thing is, do we want a town-wide survey to residents? And I put it out to the board for discussion. So uh, I, I, um, I see that on our agenda is not the sidewalk survey vote. However, I do think our next steps, it would be appropriate for me to get feedback on the charge that you asked me to make. My apologies for getting it in 530 this week. You know, last week went sideways, this week went sideways. We've all been there. So um, I'd love to, to get feedback from this group because one of the things that we talked about is uh, townwide discussion, road survey, all that stuff. So um, if it's OK with the chair, you could share that and then we could talk about it in that context to say, hey, let's let's live edit this thing and then Next meeting, we can bring it to for a charge, um, just to give it some structure. If that's okay. Well, um, let's. You're talking about the townwide survey to residents, and next I, steps. I mean, that's that's kind of next step. Let's it's, see. It's survey costs, survey to residents, next steps. I think those are all kind of. I know the, the thing I drafted kind of talks about those things. Right, uh, Jane. So. Um... 
I have to say I was pleasantly, and Corey, this relates to your question. I was pleasantly surprised by the road survey. I thought it was good in terms of the presentation with respect to giving us some guidance. Maybe there's some streets we don't necessarily agree with in terms of how exactly it's listed, but a part of me wonders whether we would get more progress in a more efficient way if we were to try to see if we could quickly get a sidewalk um, analysis done that would pair with the road survey such that we could start to make decisions like if, for example, Church Street hypothetically is going to be considered a priority for paving, what do we do with the sidewalk there? Should Can we assume that it's in a similar really bad condition or is it okay? And try to link the, the roads with the sidewalks, um, including as we try to think through cost at, and try to get a big multi-year paving schedule that encompasses both roads and sidewalks. And so in terms of next steps, one thought I had, Corey, because I saw that you contemplated a third party consultant, I think in the context of the charge. Yeah, based on what Brian said last week that we already yeah. have somebody to use. And this, the idea of being giving us a, a, a appropriate way to fund the additional work, right? And, and that's kind of, I think going to be the question is how we fund that. I guess, I guess the question I have is, should we do that work early on now and then see what additional steps the committee should take? If any, we, we, we may have more figured out than we realize, I guess is my question. And we may have a more narrow charge for the sidewalk committee um, and give them more resources to start from if we were to do that analysis upfront. Um, I guess, I, so, I guess part uh, of the idea, well, I, my yeah. apologies. I thought Gene was asking well, me for feedback. No, no, yeah, I'm trying to keep everybody and Paul had his hands up for a while. And, um, Paul? No, I'm very interested in the sidewalk committee. I thought, and forgive me if I'm wrong, that we had asked when we got the report came through about the road prioritization that we were gonna put sidewalks on there. I thought Mr. Joyce had said that we were able to do that because I'd like to get involved in that. Um, heavily as a matter of fact. Uh, so we don't have that yet is my point. Like, I, I wonder if we should be getting that right now to help then guide the next step, including a committee. But that yeah, was just- That was due last Monday or Tuesday. It was just for roads, not for sidewalks. But Brian okay. said that he was gonna put the sidewalks on there, if I'm not mistaken, right? I, I thought he said we we're gonna get the quote for how much that would how much it would cost for them to tack that on is what we were going to get back. And that's why I added to the charge, knowing that there'd be a dollar figure there so that we had had the cover. Well, I think we, we do need to get the information. Um, I, I'm, I'm sensing Gene's point is not that we don't want to have this, but that we have um, information we've already asked for that's in the process of coming in, which will make it easier to decide how we how we go forward on this. It's not a big fall. Uh, I, I think that would necessitate a pretty fast approval if it's not a real expensive project, just a, a prospect just to tack on the sidewalks to the road prioritization. We... Yeah, um, I information, um, I think ultimately, well, do we want to, empower and set up a, another um, select board appointed committee, or are we getting enough information from our various employees that already work for the town that are doing this work so they can get us some information. So then we have a larger bulk of information and then decide which way we wanna go. I, is, is that what I'm hearing? Well, Diane has her hand up. Diane. I, I don't know, Diane, your hat looks just like, your hand looks just like a cat. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I got a mouthful of fur. Um, 
you know, one of the things I was thinking about when we started talking about the survey is we do have a lot of internal baseline data that can kind of set the priority of discussion going because, for example, there are roads that somebody and if we were to do a public survey, you know, I can almost tell you what I think the, the responses are going to go look like. But in some of the cases, some of it's just not feasible. Like there are certain roads in certain places we cannot sidewalk for whatever reasons, or you know. So I think what I would like to see is kind of like. You know, what roads have moratoriums? What roads are already like the road thing is on it and then do an overlay. So I still think there's more that we can enhance this street um, paving thing with internally. But I do think we're going to have to have a third party um, procured to then add in um, the layer for the sewer. I mean, for the uh, for the sidewalks, excuse me. And again, it's the fact that I did the Freudian slip on the sewer, the truth of the matter is, again, we're not going to want, even if we determined that South Main Street was a priority tomorrow, we're not going to want to touch that till we know the resolution of sewer, for example. So I think a lot of that needs to be kind of overlaid onto this particular street report that we just got. All right, Paul? Well, maybe we're better served just waiting for Brian Joyce then for me, committee, see what we get, get a timeline from him, how long the sidewalk report will come in get the road prioritization report and um, then we move from there. And we, we need money, yeah. I think we can lay the framework prior to sewer, you know, because I think that'll be a big discussion, but I think we can lay the framework anyway. Um, and at least let people know that we're working on it. Well, I think the, um, what I'm hearing is that it, there's two that. things. There, there, there's two things, number one, does the does this select board want to create a new committee? And number two, if we do, do we want to wait for more information from our from our uh, uh, town employees and specialists who are already working on that that will help us guide it so we know exactly what we what we want? Seems to me the thread that I'm hearing. Diane, your hand is up. Yeah, I think you were going to just say it. I I think that we're simpatico on this one. I think we need to let the internal staff. Um, do what they can to, like I said, overlay some of the information. Then we have to decide um, with Chris whether there's money in an engineering um, budget to add in a sidewalk thing. And then we can discuss based on that um, data whether it's worth another committee. I mean, committees are difficult <laughs> um, in, as we were gonna see coming up um, in terms yeah. of recruiting people. So to the extent that we can do everything internally, um, authorize some expense for a third party person and, and then see where we're at um, uh, and, and bringing in the, the public voices through some kind of survey or public meeting or something. Right. And you can, um, you know, you can do a public input meeting that isn't necessarily run by a committee. It can be run by the select board or the whatever board um, or just the town. So Corey, you had your hand up. Was, was that from before or now? And then I see Jean has her hand up. Yeah, so I mean, last meeting we spoke about you know a committee structure that that was able to have representatives from the from all parts of town, and we all kind of nodded our heads and said, you know, that's a really really important thing. And I think to Paul's point, you know, in the charge, one of the seats is for a select board member, mm -hmm. and I do think that understanding that to Diane's point that committees do take time to socialize, I do think that there are enough people that are passionate about this that we will get a lot of people involved. I did in the charge say it's got a six, six month delivery window. And I think as you start undoing this blooming onion, right, you start seeing that there's a lot of stuff here, whether it's uh, funding or moratoriums or, you know, where do people live? Where do people go to school? There's all these things. And I think allowing the community and you know, volunteers to really chew on this and to bring us something strong to set up going forward is just a really good way to have success for the town it allows people to, to be involved in an official manner, allows people to be involved and get their voice heard. It also really, it's nice when we say we've charged this committee with doing this. I think we'll get a lot of really great positive feedback from the town where we say so, sidewalks are our goal. We're making a committee, tell them what you think and here we're gonna fund it. And then in six months when they're done with their work or three months, whatever they are, we're gonna take their stuff and we're gonna run with it. I think it's a really good message. So I would be in support of, of making a, a tight committee with your all, everyone's input to, to really attack this kind of head on. Okay, Jane. Um, 
I think it's important if the committee's going to succeed with, and, and, and I'm not necessarily opposed to some sort of committee working group or certainly public forum. Um, and I did like the idea of a committee. Uh, absolutely, Corey. Uh, you know, but frankly, trying to recruit people for other committees made me a little concerned about how quickly we could, a committee could move given the demands on the town to make progress in a timely manner. And it may be easier and faster progress, at least to get the decision points out there to have, for example, Chris have Brian Joyce look into doing, having tech consultants do, you know, a quick few week survey. And then we get the information back because a committee isn't necessarily gonna know about technical details that are in the report like road reclamate like reclamation and the amount of um, reconstruction or not that may be needed or or necessary and so um, like I said that road survey was pretty illuminating for me but one question I did have of Chris senior is whether Brian Joyce has gotten a cost back from tech consultants on the sidewalk that was something we talked about that he was going to get last week. And Chris, I know you were looking to come on. So I'm curious if we know that answer yet. So Brian was out today, but he has been looking at that. He was looking to set up a meeting with them this week to facilitate the scope of that, that kind of work. Um, so the company did uh, uh, engage on that. So I'm hoping to have an answer on that shortly. Oh, we will be getting that. Okay, thanks, Chris. Paul? Yeah, um, kind of dovetailing off Corey and off Gene. Um, you know, prior to setting up any committee, we've got a new web page coming out. I'm anticipating September. It might be nice to open it up and get town input first. I think you're going to get a lot of people who respond via online. And I agree with Gene about getting people to volunteer for boards. They don't just volunteer unless they know what they're getting into. Um, so I think if we can get it out there in a public forum, start generating some responses, that might give us a clear understanding of where we want to go with it. How we want to approach it by a committee because again it would be nice to get people from all four corners of Cohasset but I think you get a more robust response if they know what they're being asked to do and that their uh, contributions matter. Diane? Yeah I, I think we're probably relatively in agreement and it's kind of parallel I mean there's a lot of internal stuff that 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 you know Brian Joyce and and his um, <laughs> many associates of which there aren't many, but, you know, like, let's get some of this stuff built out here and then, and then start building in the public, the public in, input and engagement on it. And it could just be done with, I, I work with a, a lot of external relations consultants and surveying, and, and it's literally these days, one or two questions, <laughs> you know, relating to sidewalks and roads, what do you feel is the most pressing, you know, need in Cohasset? Boom, boom. And, and getting that input, while we're getting all this data collected and, and sorted out, I think then gives us a point at which to depart with actual a committee to do some of the work and handle all the stuff once. And the other thing I wanna say about committees is, um, and I am in favor almost always of committees, but they do take, they do have to be managed by staff. <laughs> Yes. So, and we have so many committees and, you know, in, in with the hybrid and moving to hybrid and the, in the desire by the community to get more meetings in person or more person, more meetings hybrid, let's say in person and external. Um, it, I think that's going to be a heavy lift to add committees. So we need to do that with a lot of thought. Am I hearing, is it kind of the consensus of the board that we would table this matter for now? I think, I think it's, it's a uh, clear response from, from Brian Joyce. Yeah, Jack, we get that uh, get that report in, or at least we get a timeline on it, include the town, then I think it give us a better understanding of where we go from there. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe we want to ask Mr. Senior to have a report for us by the August 9th select board meeting so we can continue to make progress on this, including with um identifying if there is a funding gap that we need to consider as well and i i like diane's point about also adding in the overlay of road moratoriums which i think is a very important consideration as we think about the road survey results and what sort of schedule that may yield at the end of the day i will point out i've spent quite a bit of time with the sewer people about 
various issues in South Main Street. So, um, and, and Elm Street as, as, as well. Um, we need to be very, uh, that's a good point. But anyway, moving this meeting along, are people comfortable? Are, Corey, is that you want to speak? Are you comfortable tabling it? I, I just, or? I would just, I think, I think on a macro level, I would recommend that this board, I mean, we want to be involved, but when it comes to, there's a fine line there where, you know, how much, if, if we're going to do this and do it right, a lot of the recommendations probably shouldn't come from us. It should probably come from a study committee that can speak in one voice and then we can take those recommendations. I think it, so there will be a point in time where we really want to charge this thing and get people involved and have an independent committee chew on this. I think that's going to be a lot more successful. I just caution the board about getting too far down the road of, you know, pavement types and this, that, and the other thing. I, I think it's still better the conversation would be more successful somewhere else besides us. Okay. Um, Diane, did you raise your hand again or is that this other one? Yep. I think we're in this, yeah, I think we're in the same place. I, you know, where I don't think we're tabling anything. I think we're going to ask Chris to talk, work with Brian and get some, some dates and, and possible next steps internally. And then we can start building out um, some kind of a committee public input process. Yeah, tabling just means we're not going to we'll put it on the table doesn't mean we're saying we're not going forward. We're just saying for now, we don't, we're not prepared to, you know, do that. That's all. So is are people comfortable? I mean, the other thing is, Corey, you could put a motion on the table, we can vote on it, or we can table it, it makes no difference. Um, procedurally, the motion? I, I like this, this chat. I think we did a great job. So I'm good. All right. No, no motion. Everybody's comfortable. Oh, that's good. It's nice to see a select board. Doing, I, I, I've, I've said it before, I won't say it again, but I think the select board's doing a pretty good job um, and it's difficult. Anyway, moving, moving on to um, board committee interviews and appointments. First is the zoning bylaw committee. We discussed David Farag and David McMorris, um, even though the information really was buried in the website. We couldn't um, access or find it. It's since been found, I believe. Um, so what is the, um, uh, and we've had a, a problem getting through to uh, David McMorris, um, but, you know, Chair will entertain a, a, a motion to appoint them, David Farag and David McMorris to the zoning bylaw committee. Um, Jack, Diane has her hand. Diane. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see those applications, so I, I just wanted to point that out. I don't want to be <laughs> obstructionist, but. Um, uh, Farag is in there. Uh, okay. Farag is in the packet. Farag is um, in there. Okay, then it was McMorris. I, I would recommend we move forward with Farag, but uh, the, um, um, the other gentleman was, was not included. And if there's some question about contacting, let's, I would yeah. recommend we, we do David for now and we wait on the other. That's well, okay. David McMorris is on the zoning board of appeals and uh you know i requested that his information from that which hasn't changed be be made available and it, it and it and it has but um so if if uh we want to do one by one um i mean we've kind of been down this road we had a long discussion um before about this and we put it off and etc and so on so now we, we really want to decide what we want to do here. So, um, could I, I, I'm, I'm happy to make a motion. I just want to clarify that this is a one year appointment or is it a? I believe so. Okay. So, one, yes. Okay. I'll, I'll move that we appoint David Frog to the zoning bylaw committee for a one year appointment through June, 20, June 30th, 2022, or until he is replaced or <laughs> gets reappointed. Second. We have a motion to appoint David Farag. It's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in, uh, well, excuse me, roll call vote. Jean. Jean Hardipold, aye. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Paul Ray, aye. Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Jack Creighton, aye. Motion is made. Passed unanimously. Uh, David Farag, 
Does the board have a thought on what to do about David McMorris? My only thought is just because of the way we've been running committee appointments over the years, I mean, we we make people, you know, step up and do reappointments, even if they've been on a committee for a long time. And I just don't feel comfortable voting on an application that the person hasn't proactively requested um, to be on the committee. Corey, I see you nodding. You agree with that? Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I have no reason to doubt what people are saying, but having a, a document from, from filled up from him would just uh, clear up any questions about this. So I would just, we can do it next week or next meeting and be easy. Okay. Paul? I just, I don't disagree with a lot of what you said, but the thing is, we do not have a lot of people jumping on committees. We don't have a lot of people jumping in to help. Um, so that's the part that, you know, if I were one of them, I'd probably be pulling my application going on at home. So um, I think that I'd be taken into account. That people aren't rushing through the doors to start serving the town anymore. You don't see volunteers. People work, they get home, they get tired. And according to some of the posts, they expect their quote unquote elected officials to be doing things for them that they don't have the time to do. So. You know, if this person is putting in and it's just a matter of paperwork, I don't think it's doing anything wrong by getting them on the board. We got some important things coming up, and I think that uh, we need all the help we can get. But I understand why you wouldn't want to do that. I, 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 I do want to just push back a tiny bit because we have over 120 people that serve this town. So, you know, and a lot of them do a good job. So a lot of people don't want to you know, oppose them on certain, especially the appointed committees. And, you know, I think just we will take a simple um, email, in, a letter of interest. We've done that on many occasions. We're probably going to do that on some tonight. So I just, I think that's all it takes. And that's all we're asking. Well, have I said that no one's doing a good job, Diane? I don't remember saying that. I, 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 I didn't say that. If I did, I misspoke. I said that you said there aren't a lot of people willing to serve on these committees and i'm just pointing out that there are people jumping on all you saw the ballots so you have to make it somewhat interesting so that's why I, that's my point but i commend anybody who serves on the board having served on them myself as of you for many years and i commend your service as well jane did you have your hand up I suppose I did. Um, I, I was just gonna say, so last select board meeting, we did have uh, an email from Mr. Farag expressing his interest, going into his background, all that in our packet, we made him apply, right? And so I do think we need to be, we need to be consistent in how we're treating people. If we're gonna let certain people slide by by email, but other people have to apply, even though you know there was already information in the packet, uh, I, I'm not, I remain not super happy about that. With respect to Mr. McMorris, I would like to confirm with him that he wow. is interested in going forward because I would hate to appoint him if there's some question. And okay. that's my only hesitation. It's not the, the email issue. It's, I just want to land on that um, just to be certain for his sake. That's all. Yeah, I have. Uh... I, I have reached out to him. I'm not getting any response, and and I'm and it's it's strange. I think there's a communication issue. So I know uh, you know I know him reasonably well. Um, he may be out of town. I, I don't know, but we we had things sent to him on his town email address. Um, I've left you know messages, voicemails. So there is a some uncertainty as to what's going on. So. Uh, you know, that being said, and if members of the board are uncomfortable, um, we'll just, you know, leave that as it, as, as, as it is. And, you know, we'll, I think he may be out of town on vacation. I really don't know. Um, but it's not characteristic of him not to get back. So um, we'll track him down, find out. I know that the uh, zoning bylaws are very important and he would be invaluable. And I know they're moving forward with great speed to get this done. So we'll just, again, keep it up. And if, it, if I can get in touch with him, it'll be on the next meeting. So let's move forward 
to the Harbor Committee, the Sailing Club rep is Sean Keneally and the Yacht Club rep is Eric Cruz. They are both already on there. Um, does anybody have any, any thoughts? Does somebody want to make a motion? I, I'm going to make a motion to reappoint um, Sean Keneally and Eric Cruz um, to the uh, Harbor Committee for uh, what's the term? I don't have the term sheet. Does someone have the term sheet in front of them? Are they three year terms? Hang on. Sorry. I had that tab open and then tab hell occurred and now I'm stuck. My apologies for jumping the gun on the motion. Um, three year terms. For three year terms. Thank you, Diane. Good save. We have a second. Second. We have a motion made and seconded for um, Sean Keneally and Eric Cruz. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote, Jean. Jean Haley Dippledon. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Already aye. Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Jack Rayden, aye. Um, Sean and Eric are hereby elected. Metropolitan County Advisory Board, we need a select board rep. I know Jean's been doing that. Jean, your you thoughts? Mean, you mean Norfolk County Advisory? Norfolk. No, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just to be clear. Um, yeah. <laughs> listen, if someone else would like to represent Cohasset at Norfolk County, I would be more than happy to guide them through the excitement that has been my last year. Um, and it has been exciting, <laughs> make no mistake. Very exciting. Um, so I, I don't want to take this away from someone else who's interested. Anybody interested? I didn't put an application in, so. <laughs> I, that's all right. We'll oh, wait. Diane. <laughs> like if, if, if it was appropriate I, I for mean, the fair is fair. to make a motion, I'd, I'd nominate Diane. I would make a motion to nominate Diane if she is interested. Second. You know, I, yeah, I, I, thank you. I, I mean, my only hesitation is I know most of these committees are moving to um, in-person meetings, so it's kind of a haul, but, um, but you know, I'd be willing to give it um, my all and see if uh, that, how that plays out. I, I think you're gonna be, uh, you know, the War of 1812, they impressed people. We're gonna impress you, Diane, so. <laughs> uh, we my have mom lives about two miles from the Aggies, so at least uh, work of visiting. Thanks. And you should, you should visit her more often. It will help you with that, Diane. All right, we have a motion made and seconded for Diane as our rep for the Norfolk County. Um, did Diane second it? Who seconded it? I did. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, motion. Who made discussion? the motion? I missed that. Sorry. Oh, Jean made the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I made so motion. I'll second it. That way, Diane's not seconding herself. Okay. okay. Jean, Corey, boom. Dumb. Although um, I was so excited, Jane, I tried to do both at once. <laughs> she couldn't wait to get rid of it. Oh, she I know. Overachieving. I'm, I'm actually. I think I'm being set up. <laughs> Absolutely. Gene well, and I have been Jane, in, in communication Jane, about Jane, this. Gene, so. your vote. Roll call vote. Gene Haley doubled I. Paul. One really I. Corey. Corey Evans I. Yeah, Diane. Diane Kennedy I. Jack Creighton, I thank you, Diane, by the way. Um, Metropolitan Area Planning. Um, the rep is Lauren Lind. An alternative would be a select board member. I've been doing this for the last two years, and I'm happy to continue doing it. Um, MAPC went through a little bit of leadership change. We're kind of putting the pieces back together. Um, you know, they, you know, uh, went to an MAPC meeting with Lauren a few weeks back regarding um, improving kind of intertown transportation with uh, senior center, a bunch of stuff working. So I'm happy to continue on do that. You want, do you want to do that? Does anybody else want to? Uh, Chair, I'll entertain a motion. And move to uh, approve Corey as our alternate select board member for MAPC. Second. 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 Motion made and seconded to appoint Corey as our alternate to the M, M Metropolitan Area Planning. Chris. Um, what did I do wrong? Chris, you, you, see, you also need to vote Lauren too. Officially. And Lauren. And Lauren. Yes. Um, 
Who made the amendment, Jean? You made Sorry, the I will amend my, let me withdraw. I would move to um, appoint Corey as our select board member and Lauren Lind as our representative to the MAPC. Second. Uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Second. Second, we have a motion made and seconded to appoint Lauren Lind and um, Corey to the uh, Metropolitan uh, Commission, whatever. Um, Roll call vote, Jean. Jean Healy, Dippel Dye. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Already aye. Corey. Graham, it's aye. Thank uh, you. Jeff Creighton, aye. Just a little thing. Um, we should be aware what Jean did was actually very time consuming. If you want to amend a motion, if you sometimes you withdraw the motion and put a new one in, it's faster, if it's not controversial. Uh, moving forward, alternative South Shore Recycling Committee, Merle Brown. Chair will entertain discussion or a motion. I move that we appoint uh, Merle Brown to as our representative process representative to the South Shore Recycling Committee. Second. We have a second. We have a motion made and seconded to appoint Merrill Brown to the South Shore Recycling Committee. Hearing no further discussion, Jean. Jean Healy, Dippel Dye. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Already aye. Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Jack Creighton, aye. Merrill is appointed. Alternative Energy Committee, Tanya Bodell. Patricia Gooding, reappointments. Um, and if we are comfortable with this, we can um, include in the, in the motion a new applicant for one seat, Christopher. Christopher uh, Odleafson. I know, I, I know Chris well and I mispronounce his name every time. So anyway, is there discussion on this? I, I just I just have a question about um, the there was another application, I believe, for the citizen position. I don't know whether um, you know the chair of AEC made the recommendation or or what where that application is in the queue. This is her recommendations, uh, Jean. Yeah, if I recall, if I recall correctly, there was a, a conflict for one, and then um, I believe that the the chair was working with that other applicant, and um, we may suggest in the future. And I think this is something we can talk at the. AEC, well, we, we have to put it on a new agenda, but maybe create an associate member position for someone who's interested in that, if, if they're interested in serving um, further. But that was, I think, you know, after some consult with the applicant and the chair. That was okay. Yeah, the applicant, um, there was a potential conflict in the applicant. And I think they wisely decided, you know, if there's a potential conflict, just let's not push the envelope. Um, however, is there other discussion on this? And keep in mind, we can reappoint and we can wait for the rest of it or we can continue them all at once. Corey, your hand is up. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to look for it. I got, I got a communication from the chair or I was in a meeting or something, but uh, what, what, I'm just gonna echo what Jean said, which is I believe that um, AEC may be looking for an associate member and that the applicant um, that is no longer on the docket is, uh, would like to serve in that role. I think uh, so that came across the transom somewhere. So I think we're good to Diane's concern. I think everyone's going to be included um, because this is such a committee right. that everyone wants to be on. So, and this is has as submitted by the um, the applicant. Chris is in the audience. Um, so Chris, we see you're there. Chris, I think what you need to do is hit the. Hold on. Um, Video. Chris is still in attendance. I need to call him, Jack. Tanya's here too, you know. I just met it. I've moved them in. I just, I just hit another button. Am I here now? There we go. Yes, you are. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Thank you for, uh, for, for um, putting your hat in the ring. Well, uh, I am really looking forward to this. Uh, Tanya and I had a 
a bit of a discussion. I looked at a lot of the material she's prepared uh, over the last few years, super impressive. And I look really look forward to serving with her on the committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Tanya, I see you there. Do you have a comments to make? Hmm. I just wanna quickly clarify, you all got to where we are. One of the applicants has a conflict. The other is interested in an associate position, which I would recommend given how sometimes esoteric the energy industry is to people who are coming to it new. And I don't wanna squeeze people out because they feel intimidated or don't have background. I want passion. Um, Chris offers an incredible background, especially when you hear what we're going to present. I think his background and passion for the environment is very timely. So um, Chris, thank you for stepping up, but I just want to commend everybody who's volunteered and put in an application. We love having people be involved and we've had such great high quality people who want to be involved and who are involved. So that's all I have to say for this one. Well, well, thank you. We've got Chris all roped in. We want to vote him in before he thinks about it. I believe, <laughs> I believe we have a motion on the floor and it's seconded. Is there any further discussion? I don't think we have a motion yet. I make a motion no. to appoint Tanya Bodell and Chris uh, Odelson to the Alternative Energy Committee for, I'm looking at the chart, and it's not on there, um, three-year terms. Three-year term to 2025, and can you amend it with, to add Patricia Gooding? Oh, yes. Uh, amended to include Tanya Bodell, Chris Olson, and Patric Patricia Gooding. Thank you all. You I'll need to that. Add, not amend it. All right. The, the chair is pretty withdrawal. clear. We accept my withdrawal of my resubmission. Right. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Um, roll call vote. Um, Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Paul. Paul Brady, aye. Gene. Gene Healy Dipple, aye. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Jack Creighton, aye. Thank you, Chris, and welcome aboard. Thanks. I'll sign off and sign back on as a watcher. Well, you can you can watch, you, you know, now Tanya's very good to work out. with. It's no more than five or six evenings a week and only every other Saturday. Okay. Affordable Housing Steering Committee. Reappointments, Beth Tarpey, Paul Kearse, full members, Mary Hines, full members, Susan Sardinia is the Housing Authority. And these are all reappointments. Is there any discussion on this? All right, the chair would entertain a motion. The chair would entertain, all right. We have a, uh, a motion that's been, uh, we have a motion that's been moved. Um, do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion that's made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? And just to confirm, this is a three-year term. Is I'm looking for the terms, yeah. For the I believe terms. it is. Right. So many is emails. Any, <laughs> is there any discussion from the audience? Hearing no discussion, um, roll call vote. Diane. Diane put her finger up. Sorry, I'm going to abstain just because I'm trying to find something. Okay. Do you want us to wait while you look for something? So I'm sorry. I was looking for Susan Sardina's application. I remember last year she left the committee. Um, so I just want to confirm that I'm right about that memory. Tracy and or anybody? RP. Paul Kears. So Diane, I mean, the committee application is dated 7-20-2022 for Susan. I'm good. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Diane. Diane Kennedy, I. Jane. Jane Haley, Dippleton. Paul. Paul Brady, I. Corey. Corey Evans, I. Jack Creighton, I. Congratulations to each and every one of you, and thank you for serving our town. That's a particularly challenging uh, position, by the way. Cohasset Common Historic Distance uh, District, John Coffey. He's a uh, reappointment. He lives right on the common. Um, any discussion? 
just what's the term? I'm looking for the term thing again. I can't find the spreadsheet. For commission. Th uh, it's a three year. It's a three year as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I just can't find this thing. My apologies. Chair, in a motion. Motion. So moved. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. We've had a motion made and seconded uh, to put John Coffee on the uh, the district commission for a three year term. Term. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, uh, roll call vote. Jean. Jean Hilly Dippel Dye. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Paul Brady, aye. Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Jack, aye. Thank you. Um, and, you know, thank you, Mr. Coffey. Um, moving on, the Cohasset Cultural Council reappointment. Kelly Bazile, dual applicants, John Jackson, Caitlin Rain. We have any discussion? I do see John Jackson in the audience. I don't know if he wanted to make a comment on this. John? John, you're muted. I got there. It took a little while. All right. Good evening, everybody. The uh, the process of entering the meeting cuts out the last 10 seconds of audio, so I'm a bit of a blank slate, but happy to be here. Okay. You've been nominated for the um, Cultural Council? Understood. Yes. Okay. So you can make any comment. Um, yeah, so I'm very much looking forward to serving if given the opportunity. Um, I've had a look at the past activities. I think they're all very sensible and I look forward to working with the council members to keep an open mind on future activities. So very much welcome the opportunity to be considered for this. Okay, uh, comments, J Diane? I just want to say, John, that's the committee I started out on a bazillion years ago in town. So, um, and I also want to point out that John's a phenomenal musician. Um, well, I agree. Um, I'll, I'll withhold comment because he lives next door to me. Um, so, Paul. Oh. I make a motion to approve. Okay, we've had a motion to approve. Um, do we have a second? Second, and I believe this is for a three year term. Yeah. We have a yeah. motion to approve um, for a three year term. Um, just clarification on the motion, is Kelly it for all three? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's Kelly Bazile, John Jackson, and Caitlin Reen. Is that includes, is our, that's in the motion? Okay. I want to clarify that. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, um, roll call vote, Diane. Diane Kennedy, I. Jean. Jean Healy Dipple Dye. Paul. Paul Brady I. Corey. Ravens I. Good to see you, John. Yeah. Congratulations, Jack. John. Thank you. Yeah. Jack Braden. Congratulations, all three of you. Um, thank you. Thank you, John. First Thanks, all. Conservation Commission. Um, reappointment of Will Ashton for a full member. Chris McIntyre appointment as a full member. He was an associate. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, um, Chair will entertain a motion. I move to reappoint um, for a term of three years. Oh, I just... Will Ashton. Will, Will Ashton and Chris McIntyre to the Conservation Commission. Second. As full members. All right. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Um, well, actually, I'm sorry, Diane. Oh, uh, Diane Kennedy, aye. Jean. Jean Healy, double die. Paul. Paul. Sorry about that. Uh, Paul Brady, aye. Corey. 
for everyone's eye. Jack Creighton, I, the vote is unanimous. Congratulations. Elder Affairs Board reappointment, Richard Hines, Elaine Coyne, and both his full members. Is there any discussion? I'll move, no, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll move that we um, we reappoint Richard Hines and Elaine Coyne as full members uh, to the Elder Affairs Board for a three-year term. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to appoint um, Richard Hines, Elaine Coins as full members for the Elder Affairs Board. Um, um, hearing no further discussion, um, call for the vote. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Already aye. Jean. Jean Haley Dipple, aye. Corey. Cravens, aye. Jack Great, aye. Congratulations. The vote is unanimous. Cohasset Housing Authority reappointment, Virginia Najami as the tenant rep. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, um, Chair would entertain a motion. This is a five-year term, Jack, just to let you know. Yeah, thank you. I would move to appoint Ms. Najami to the um, Cohasset Housing Authority as the tenant rep for a term of five years. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the vote. Paul? Paul Brady, aye. Corey? Ravens, aye. Jean? Jean Healy, double die. Diane? Diane Kennedy, aye. Jack Creighton, aye. The vote is unanimous. So congratulations. Um, open space and recreation, reappointment. You know, Adam Norman is citizen at large. John Mahoney is a recreation rep. Is there any discussion? Uh, just, I think it's John McMahon. Is there? Yeah, yeah, just what I said, McMahon. Okay. Is there any further discussion? I move to appoint Adam uh, Norman as citizen at large and John McMahon as the recreation representative to the Open Space and Rec Committee. Second. Second. We have motion uh, made and seconded um, for Norman, uh, Adam Norman and John McMahon for um, Open Space and Recreation. Hearing no further discussion, I call the vote. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Paul Brady, aye. Jean. Jean Healy, double die. Corey. Ravens, aye. Jack Creighton, I, congratulations and thank you. Community Preservation Commission Select Board Rep for a two year term. Um, and we have also reappointment of the Open Space and Recreation Committee, uh, Mary Ann Weatherall. Is there a Select Board Rep who wants to serve? I just Nine have a question. Yeah, I have a question. I know Jean's, uh, Jean's appointment doesn't expire till. Right. Um, 2024. To your term. So I don't know. No. That was, I think I'm oh, sorry, go on. Uh, Chris. Chris has the answer. Go for it. <laughs> so if you remember, Diane, we reset all the terms. And this is one of the resets. So the okay. term will be uh, uh Gene was filling the last year of Paul's term. Gotcha. Or the last two years. And, and so this is a new term for two years, and then two years it'll go to three years. It's part of that stagger so that yep. next year you'll start appointing. The, te the regular the the citizen at large reps for three year term and a two year term and a one year term to get them one in a cycle. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Did, did I'm, reading my, I'm reading my wonderful town report, but <laughs> the nuances aren't in there. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jane. I would be happy to continue serving out uh, the CPC term um, or restarting the two year term. Okay. So Any discussion on this? I mean, I would love to be considered for it. Um, last year, I also expressed interest and in, I think the discussion was with the vice chair and all the workload, you know, um, I, uh, after Jean said she'd be willing to do it, I said, absolutely. So I'd love to take a shot at that because um, it's just a, a great committee. So if the board would entertain- Okay, so we, that, we have two candidates. So what we'll do is we'll, um, is there any opposition to uh, Marianne Weatherall? Nope. You want me to make a motion? 
yeah, let's do Marianne and then we will discuss that. Okay, I move that we appoint Marianne Weatherald as the um, Open Space and Rec Commission um, representative to the Community Preservation Committee for a term of three years. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a, a motion made and seconded to uh, appoint um, Marianne Weatherall. Um, roll call vote, Jean. Jean Hilly Double Die. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Paul Brady, aye. Corey. Raven, aye. Jack Creighton, um, aye. Thank you, Marianne. Um, okay, so now we have. Um, two people who are interested in the select board, uh, you know, rep. Um, so obviously we're gonna to have to vote on that. Do both of the candidates wish to address the board as to why they wish to continue? Jean. Um, I take Corey's point about the amount of work that the vice chair has. Certainly it's a lot of work and I've been doing that. Um, I suppose what I would just say, and this is my reason for my continued interest on CPC, is that there's a lot of, I think, work that I can help the committee progress on. There was a lot of issues that were spotted, including perhaps the need for some rules and regulations, some more process surrounding deadlines. I think the committee is also going to play an important role in the long-term financial planning as we look at different revenue sources and how to effectively leverage those on behalf of the citizens. So I think having a background um, knowledge into all of that, including how the committee works will be helpful. And so that's really my main interest is not only just the disposition of CPC funds, but trying to help encourage the committee towards some processes that I think will be helpful for both CPC and also to help grapple with some of the issues that we were beginning to really work through in the second half of, or I should say the first half of this year um, as it relates to improving the process and procedure for CPC in, I think, a way that would be beneficial. Okay, thank you, Jane. Uh, Corey, um, as a candidate, your position, and I see that Paul Grady had his hand up, but Corey, this is your campaign speech. No, I, I, I completely agree with Gene. I mean, I'm, I think I'm a kind of captain process here on this board. Um, and I do think I agree that, I mean, CBC funds are, there's a, there's a charge, there's a process, there's some, there's some walls. And I remember just a couple of the conversations that were occurring, you know, a few years ago about what, you know, I think it was a church, there's a bunch of really interesting things. And I, it's just, uh, there's a passion for me last year. And, um, you know, I stepped aside to say, hey, you know, we'll let someone else do it. So uh, still a passion of mine. And, uh, you know, want to bring that, you know, when it comes to spending money, you know, I do this all day long, uh, professionally. So, um, you know, making good decisions is, is comes naturally to me. So I'd love to bring the, that energy that I have for kind of everything um, to CPC. And also, I agree with Gene, you know, uh, assist with structure would be the best way to phrase that. Okay. Um, all right, um, let's have a discussion from the board members, um, Paul, and I think Jean, uh, Diane, you raised your hand as well. But Paul, you were first. You're... Diane can go first. Diane? I, you know, having served on CPC, I, I know what an important role it is. And I think, um, you know, I mean, obviously both of my colleagues are um, clearly, um, you know, qualified and passionate. Um, I do think, you know, because Corey isn't leading the charge on as as much as Jean is with with both the financial plan and the and the um, field study and the vice chairman role. I you know just on that alone, just the the workload and having that been a deterrent last year for Corey, I would um, I would you know uh, lean towards um, appointing Corey. Okay, Paul. I guess this world well speaking. Um, I defer to Corey's skills. I don't you know, I haven't worked with him before. I did work with uh, Gene on CPC as a representative from the planning board. And I thought it was productive, was well informed. Um, and I'd be inclined to go with Gene just because, and it's no, nothing against Corey, it's because I worked with Gene on that board. And um, 
I go back on that board in a minute. So uh, and Jean's a big part of that. So I would lean towards you. He's throwing your name in. <laughs> Is that the compromise we, we put so, Paul back on <laughs> instead of no. I, I enjoy serving on the board, but all right, so um, we have two candidates. Um, we have strong thoughts either way. Um, any other board member want to comment before we figure out the best way to vote? You know what? Vote? Corey's convinced me. He stepped aside last year. I'm happy to step aside this year um, in part because of the workload. Uh, my only ask to Corey is that because of the interrelation with long-term financial planning that you and I work together on that piece and that there are a lot of rules and regs that you know we were starting to kick around and I'd love Absolutely. to help in the background to help, help yeah. you and CPC move that forward. Uh, yeah, and, and again, the, the role is representative of this board. So, you know, I'm just gonna reflect what we're doing here. So. Right, fine. Um, Corey. You don't want to step in front of one of your voters who had her hand up. <laughs> Diane. Um, no, and I, I I actually for a few years have been saying that we really should as a board discuss some of the procedures. I mean, you know, applications, particularly from town departments that get in, you know, kind of at the last minute. I mean, there really needs to be a process. Uh, you know, most towns have a deadline in the fall for review over the course of the months, and then it's something that comes up in in, in an annual town meeting and not special. So I would love for all of us to have that conversation and to see how we can support um, our colleagues on that board. Well, I think we have uh, one candidate at this point. Jean, you you officially have withdrawn? Yeah, I'm gonna withdraw, but to, just to piggyback on what Diane was talking about, I think there's the application side. There's also the due diligence side in terms of following up on projects and the money. That was something, frankly, I struggled with in terms of asking for due diligence on the swim center to make sure they were on track. And you know, it, it wasn't put on the agenda and there wasn't seen as a need for due diligence and here we are. And so that's something that was particularly important to me in terms of making sure that board is run with um, some eagle eyes on the flip side too. And so with that said, I would move to appoint Corey as the select boards community preservation committee rep. I'll second. Second. We have a motion made and second to appoint Corey to the uh, CPC um, as a select board. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, um, roll call vote, Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul. Paul Brady, aye. Jean. Jean Healy Dippleback. Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Sure. Jack Creighton, I, the vote is unanimous. Congratulations, Corey. I've said this before, but I am, I am very impressed with the ability of this select board to sit there and engage in honest dialogue and make decisions and what's good for the benefit of the town. It's very impressive and, and, and for people at home, it's impressive. Okay, anyway, moving on. Um, Veterans Waterfront Park, is Glenn here? Glenn Pratt? There's Glenn. Hey Glenn, tell us about your Waterfront Park. Uh, good evening everyone, thank you. Uh, just by way of background, uh, I'm representing the um, Veterans Memorial Committee, which has been working on building out uh, Veterans Park at the Harbor since 1969. Uh, we have uh, over the years, uh, put up a memorial which lists the names of every Cohasset uh, person who has served in that particular war, all the way back to the Civil War. Now we have two more uh, national conflicts that we'd like to uh, put a memorial wall up for. They are the Revolution and the War of 1812. And surprisingly enough, over 200 Cohasset men uh, served in the Revolution uh, or fought in that effort, and another 125 in the War of 1812. So we would like to uh, be, be given the permission to go ahead and develop and um, add an additional memorial wall uh, at the Veterans Park. And Tracy, are we able to put that graphic up of the uh, proposed uh, wall? Sure, give me one sec. Yep. So the idea is that in the center of Veterans Park, there is a very low wall, it's about 18 inches high off the ground. Uh, and we would uh, use the same design uh, for the new wall, which would be as you'll see when the picture comes up, uh, 
on the on the cement seawall, which is uh, between Veterans Park and the harbor now. And uh, in addition to the revolutionary names and the War of 1812 names, we're trying to develop a fitting way to um, make people know that there is a Cohasset veteran who was a recipient of the Medal of Honor. Uh, his name is uh, Levi Gaylord. He's buried at Central Cemetery. So we'd probably um, memorialize him there also. So if you can see from the graphic, which just went away, is it still up? Can you see the picture? Uh, from the graphic, if you, the, uh, in the forefront of the picture is uh, the existing round circular memorial. So this picture is taken from standing in there. And then just beyond that, right at the edge of the water, uh, the same design wall uh, would go along the top of the existing cement seawall that's there and list the 325 names for these two wars. And we've been, we've been talking about this for probably three or four years. Uh, we, we just haven't gotten a chance to uh, bring it before you. Uh, so we are happy to do that tonight. And we think it's very timely to get the green light now to work on this because there's gonna be a lot of uh, construction and development going on adjacent to and in connection with Veterans Park as the new condominiums are built. Um, you may know that as part of the new zoning uh, requirements that the condominiums will have to have an open space all the way from Veterans Park to Margin Street. So tying this all together is gonna be important. And if we have the uh, okay from your board to move ahead, we can try to coordinate things with the developer. Uh, every, every one of the uh, memorials that's at the park um, has been paid for through private donations that the committee or um, the veterans organizations or combination uh, have raised over the years. Um, in 1969, when we put the first wall up, uh, we did get $6,600 from the town meeting. So uh, we didn't raise every nickel, but um, most of it we have over the years. So we would like to uh, uh, move ahead with your permission and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, comments from the board, Diane? Um, yeah, I think Glenn, the last time we were talking about this was probably, as you said, three and a half, four years ago. And um, you know, I'm a so, somewhat of a reluctant person for memorials and, and things, um, <laughs> just in terms of the visual landscape. So my only concern at this point, I'm, I'm totally behind it, is just um, the tying in with with the Harbor Walk and, and making sure that you don't foresee any, uh, you know, I know you said that, this is why you're bringing it now, um, that you don't foresee any change. Diane. Uh, I know, I, I, I have a cat tail. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who can, who can mute me? <laughs> um, anyway, just want to make sure that that is a big piece of the next step is, is making sure it ties in and, and that just in terms of even materials that there's going to be some conversation between what you're proposing and, and what the Harbor Walk is going to look like, because that is the public piece of the development. And, that, and that's why I think it's important if we have the go ahead now, because now when we talk to those other groups, they know that we have some authority to be talking on the topic. So well, we're all we're all for that. Okay. Uh, other discussion? Any discussion from the audience? Okay, the um, I think Glenn, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a motion of support or? Yeah, I, I think that uh, I think that if you could give us uh, some sort of a motion that says that uh, you know acknowledges his town property and that we have the green light to uh, move ahead with uh, uh, design um, for this memorial, and of course we keep you posted as we go. Uh, but just just the uh, the authority to go ahead and consider this piece of town property and start developing ideas. I can Chris, are there any ramifications we should be aware of? You're just approving a design. I think uh, I don't think that's uh, anything at this. When it actually gets to construction, it's a little might be a little bit different. Okay, Paul, I gladly uh, make that motion. Our veterans deserve it. Mm -hmm. We have a second. I'd second the motion to approve the design phase. Okay. We have a uh, motion made and seconded to approve the design phase of the Veterans Waterfront Park. 
um, a revolutionary in 1812 memorial. Um, Point of clarification, just so, um, so that require the um, Glenn and, and the, the, the group to come back to us with the design yes. final approval. Okay, just making yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. We, we're, yeah, we, we uh, certainly would, would want to have your buy in all the way along. But. Yeah, I think we're all on the same page. Just wanted to add that clarified just for the, the record. Got it. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Gordon. We've had a motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Clarification is, of course, that, um, that Corey pointed out. Um, this is requires them to come back to us for final approval. Um, any further discussion? Roll call vote, Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Jean. Jean Healy Dippel, aye. Paul. Already, aye. Jack Creighton, aye. Glenn, thank you very, very much. You've, you're a tireless uh, supporter of Cohasset. Um, we really appreciate the work that you've done and we are very proud as a town to wish you well on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. Um, 8.40, we're only 20 minutes behind. Um, alternative energy update. Now, just as we know, um, hi Tanya, how are you? You're, you're muted. Um, all of this information, all the details in this is in the select board packet. It has been posted on the town website. And by the way, for everybody to know, anytime something is moving forward, it is this policy of the select board to get that information as complete as possible, um, available as a selectman's packet select persons, members packet, and on the town website. So citizens at home will be able to get all this information. And the reason we do this is so a lot of the details you'll already have access to. Now, obviously, if you have questions, you can ask them, but we don't have to go into detail and all the details because they're already posted. And by the way, that's part of this select board's new communication policy, which requires that for all town this this practical anyway so tanya so um i am here to tell you what i'm going to tell you at a future meeting tell it at a future meeting and then a third time perhaps you make a vote so this is an introduction and you're absolutely right jack we've submitted a summary of the issues we have a presentation and so my question to you is how would you like us to proceed under your policy and guidelines? Well, first of all, why don't you tell us about your projects? Okay. Um, so what I'll do just for the people in the audience is if I could share a presentation, that way there are some visuals to help illustrate what we're talking about. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so there are three action items that we wanna to talk to you about today. And these are introductions. As I said, these are introductions to what we'd like to uh, have you consider voting on in the future. And this includes the EV charging stations. What should we charge to recover the cost and the fees? Municipal solar, an opportunity that the town has to reduce its electricity costs from third-party sites and residential solar, a way that we think we can help um, people understand what the different options are that are available through an unbiased source and to also take away some of the responsibility from questions that members of the Alternative Energy Committee are getting from people who wanna install solar. And some of us have more knowledge than others, but none of us are experts. So there's a potential solution for that and then potential next steps. So we're going to be introducing the topic today. Um, the first is the charging stations. As we told you, when we thought it was time to start charging for the charging stations, we would let you know. We let you know a couple of months ago, we're going to come back to you with a proposed fee structure, but it is now costing the town $653 a month. We have a growing number of unique chargers, and, and that'd be a total of 80 per month and it's growing, and the number of sessions 
of people charging on the electric um, vehicle charging stations is increasing. And this is another disturbing fact, which is on average, those vehicles are charging five and a half hours. And that includes town as well as a lot of private cars and two and a quarter hours of that is actually charging and three and a quarter are um, idling. And so they're blocking the EV charging stations for others. Corey. Uh, is it an average or like a median because the town cars would obviously it'd be small cars that are plugged in idling for a long time. I'm just wondering if the data, if there's a, another way to read that data. Yeah, this is an average, but when we look at where they're charging, uh, it's a, sort of the same thing for the okay. non town hall locations. Yeah. And in fact, the town hall locations are not included in here. Yeah, because yeah. charge point does not include the town hall charging stations where the um, two of the electric vehicles tend to live. Okay. Uh, to the extent that we can, um, can we wait for questions through each section when they're done? Um, that, that'll move it along a little faster. But. Yep. So the um, Alternative Energy Committee is looking at whether the towns are charging. We're talking to ChargePoint about what they're charging. We're looking at our historical average price. We're looking at tariffs that will go into the future. And we're going to propose to you a charging price for the actual energy that's consumed to at least cover the costs. And in addition to that, a um, you can call it a penalty or a disincentive to just idle. And, and that is commonly done. And we have some numbers that we're getting from places. And so we'll be coming to you with those numbers to recommend to you what the Alternative Energy Committee recommends for purposes of charging to at a minimum allow the town to recover its costs and disincentivize idling. Um, we believe this is not complete unless we also come to you to talk about how to match those revenues to the costs. Right now, any revenues that would come in through charging for the electricity at these charging stations would just go into the general fund. It doesn't necessarily guarantee that they would be covering the cost directly. Things fall to the bottom line. There are other things that happen. So we think it's time to start discussing with you a structure that would allow, for example, EV charging fees to be matched to charging costs. This accounting would allow us to be able to make sure we're covering our costs and make sure that we're not overcharging, for example, but it also sets up a structure that will cover some of the other initiatives that we have underway. So solar energy credits, which are being paid for by our purchase agreement or credit payments, grants or subsidies, some of which need to be paid before they get reimbursed, um, market sales, if we have the opportunity to have reliability assets to pay for themselves, there would be revenue coming in. We'd want to make sure those are covering the cost. So we think that this is a bigger conversation, but this is a small uh, situation with the EV charging fees and the charging costs that we think it's time to start thinking about a structure to allow the town to look at the operational needs, um, at the operational organization of the initiatives that the Alternative Energy Committee is bringing to you to make sure we're, we've got our arms around the costs and the benefits. Um, and we can do this in the absence of a municipal light plant structure. And for example, we could just set up a department in the town um, through a special revenue fund and have a revolving fund. Uh, we could also have a reserve fund. So there's different ways to do it, but we'd like to talk to a lawyer uh, to understand more about that and come to you with a complete recommendation, which you may or may not want to act on at this point, but at least you know we're thinking about it. We, we have a need to start accounting for the costs and the revenues to make sure we're, we're truly covering and recovering the costs that are being spent, uh, the, the costs that are being expended in these different initiatives. So that's it for the EV charging. Any questions? Paul. These are all uh, the cars that are charging, Tanya. These are all like personal vehicles? Most of, most of them are personal vehicles, yes. So there's 80 unique vehicles. The town, I think, only has three EVs. So there's around 77 private vehicles that are so using the electricity. They are using their home electricity or uh, facilities to charge their own vehicles. They're charging from the town funds. They're correct. Okay, thank you very much. Correct. Corey. I was just um, on the, the idea of charging. I think I'm glad you guys are, are taking this up because I think it's, it's definitely time, especially because 
I, I'm, I use the chargers when I'm, you know, getting, you know, dinner or coffee or something like that in town, which I think is great, but you do notice that the chargers are getting worn and they're going to, there is going to be a cost to repair these. And frankly, there's nothing more frustrating than a broken charger. So I want to be sure that, you know, that I don't think the residents should be paying for these repairs, but if residents are using them, there should be a funding source to be sure that these get repaired. So having some sort of, you know, revolving fund that says this is the money that we're, we were generated from the stations and this is going to be the ones that we use to repair them when they break. I think that makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Um, Tanya? Yes, I totally agree. And, and I think, Corey, you raised the longer term capital investment and maintenance cost. And some of these are not operating and creating frustration. Diane and then Jack. Yeah, well, just a comment, and I always come up with a question, and then you've always answered it by the end of the PowerPoint, so thank you for that, but I just think in terms of um, play, playing out the timeline on this, I think all of these funds, especially a reserve fund and a revolving fund, um, would require likely town meeting action, so we want to make sure that you back up, um, you know, the benchmark dates so that we get, we're able to deliver on that. Yes. Jack. Yeah, um, when you're not using the screen, if we go back to the other uh, thing would be helpful because just for technical thing, unless people can see us on the on the Zoom, there's a question as to whether we're absolutely in compliance with the open meeting law. Um, I would say that um, these things should pay for themselves. It's an enterprise like anything else. Um, if you have a fuel source, you're paying rent, you're paying depreciation costs on the equipment, you're paying for the cost of the equipment. And um, this is a great benefit that the town is offering, but it, but it should be on a, a financially sound. So I think that I really welcome that moving forward. And I think that people who are not using it want to see that itself that it pays for itself most people obviously aren't going to use it so the town needs to make sure this is financially self-sustaining so as always i applaud what you're what you're doing on that it's a great idea so what was the um every other questions and what are we on the next uh is that third party are we done with the electric vehicle charging we're state? done with the electric vehicle charging okay and we'll come back to you with um a proposal on all of these and the vote you might take maybe let's start charging now knowing it's going into the general fund and do more contemplation about the right type sure. of thing. Jean. Jean. Um, thank you Tanya as usual for your helpful and informative presentation. Um, I totally agree with everyone it's time to start charging it's like we have a free gas station but it's environmentally friendly. Um, I think one thing for you to consider, and I'm sure you know this, but I'm just gonna put out there is with an enterprise fund, the way that we work it with water and sewer, which are our other enterprise funds is, there's a lot of shared services that have those costs imposed upon them. So for example, our finance director's time, our, all, the, all the people that are supporting this quote fund as we think through what the accurate pricing is. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where that lands in terms of pro or con, but I just bring it forward because I do think that there's a lot of um, sunk or administrative costs that <clears throat> should be factored in as we think about price uh, in addition to replacement, but you know, all of the procurement and other um, time of our town staff that go into this work that probably is appropriate to account for um, it, as appropriate. Totally agree. And in some of these grants, that's considered a payment in kind. And so if we properly account for it, we get to offset that against the uh, non-federal share, for example. Okay. Well, that's good. I think we're in agreement and we can certainly figure out a way um, to, to segregate the funds as they come in and solve that the structure thing later on but i think it is time to start charging and i suspect that that you can be your committee will in the interim can figure out a fair rate and we can go forward um third party solar site yes um let me share the screen again 
for the third party solar site. So the third party solar site, as you know, we asked bidders during the solar RFP to come up with proposals both for town sites as well as third party sites. And most certainly third party sites are nice because it takes all the liability off of the town. Uh, on the other hand, there's a higher leasing cost to be able to use somebody else's site instead of the town just charging nothing in order to get the savings, higher savings in our electricity credits. So um, in 2020, Palmer Capital proposed using the new roofs at the Stop and Shop Plaza to install solar as well as carports. And this is an, a map of what was submitted. The blue are on the roofs, the red are the carports. Um, they have skinned down this proposal to only have the rooftop solar, which takes it down from 1.7 megawatts to around 0.5 megawatts, so significantly smaller. That is approximately the size of the landfill solar energy array. So we'd be able to double our solar um, the other thing about this is it would be just a potentially just the credits. We don't have to buy the power itself. The way that the state has set up the program is the town can basically buy a credit. So we get a, for example, a hundred dollar discount off of our electricity bill and can only, we'd only have to pay $87 and 50 cents, for example. And so this is the proposal that's in place. We want to talk to you about the specifics of the numbers, but this Thursday, we have Palmer Capital coming to present to the Alternative Energy Committee. Um, one of the options is a fixed solar credit price. What that means, that AOBC credit to the bill, that changes over time. So the town has a risk that sometimes we're in the money, sometimes we're out of the money. Uh, with respect to the old landfill, we've been so in the money, we've just been printing money, the almost $300,000 in savings over time, um, but it's not as rich anymore. The other option that was offered is just give us a fixed percentage price. So if the AOBC credit value is $20, we'd get, uh, we'd only have to pay 87.5% of it, for example. And that guarantees us always being in the money but we give up potential upside if we do that. So those are the different pricing options. The price can be fixed, it can be escalating, or it can be a guaranteed percentage. Uh, I think we need to hear from the select board what their risk preference is, but this Thursday, we're gonna learn more about what the options are. Uh, it is not as rich as putting solar on our roofs and feeding directly into our buildings, but the opportunity for the town to do that is non-existent right now. Um, and that's just because the school roofs have to be replaced and it would be silly to put the solar energy on that. Um, if we do do a third party site, such as stop and shop buildings, we get the benefit of the credit, a guaranteed five to 10% discount off of our electricity price um, without the liability. And so that's a nice aspect of this proposal. So that's what we're gonna come back to you with, with actual numbers and then hear from you, sort of what direction you might want us to move in. And maybe you don't want to buy it off a third party site anyway. Um, we did not identify third party sites. We just said to the developers, go talk to people with great roofs and parking lots in town and come back to us. And this is the uh, proposal that has continued to move forward. And again, thanks to our local developer, Paul Capital, for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions? I'll stop sharing. Corey. Uh, did you want uh, guidance from the board now on the option one, option two, or do you want to do more information gathering before coming back to us? Um, I, if there's a consensus right now, that would help us. Um, but I think you're going to need to see the numbers. Okay. Uh, on first pass, if it's me, you know, option one, um, you know, if you want to be really kind of reductive about it, it's kind of gambling, right? So, and, you know, as a municipal, you know, this isn't our money. And I think that, uh, you know, we, I think trading the the uh, potential uh, is worth it for the consistency. I think you know if we're just saving the town money, that's great. But I think if we're trying to get into playing the game, I'm not quite sure that's our role. Yeah, Paul. Um, I have just two points. Fixed in my line of business, I'm against because if the price goes down, I need a percentage. If it's non-escalating, is 
not a bad way to go. But my biggest fear is third parties. I'm inherently afraid of them um, because it's a business, it's a prospect, and no one's in it not to make money. So that's to me would be something I'd be a little wary of um, or any third party or business because I don't see a lot of altruism out there in today's society. So I would go uh, a fixed price if it's in perpetuity, but a percentage if it's non-escalating. You might want to think about that. Say, I, I'm just being hypothetical. 5% of what we take in. Um, and again, that's a completely hypothetical number. We'll wait to see your numbers come in, but I would not go escalating because, you know, um, time is the biggest enemy. It moves on down the road, Tanya, and, you know, Prices change, that percentage is going to change too. Someone's going to want a little bit more. It has to be ironclad. But also fixed, you might get stuck paying it at a higher rate than what the lower rate is. Mm -hmm. so I would steer towards a percentage, but I would also, as I said, I'm very wary of third parties when they're offering up usually offers. If it's too good to be true, it usually isn't. It usually is, I believe. <laughs> so, no, it if it's too good to be true, Jack, it usually isn't. That's what I meant. Yeah. It is too good to be. Never mind. It is. <laughs> other, um, we, we will have this discussion later on. Um, other comments from the board. Yeah, I, I think what we're hearing is this is good stuff. Um, we don't have the information, but you, you're presenting in a way that we, we, we get the, uh, the essence of what the trade off is. Doing a good job. We appreciate it. And Jean? Jane, you're muted. Yep. I, I was just going to echo Paul echo Paul's comments about the third party. I'd be interested in knowing what more we need to do, including admin, legal, and other costs in order to protect ourselves sufficiently. The juice may not be worth the squeeze at the end of the day, and it may be um, more advantageous for us to focus our town efforts in another way, depending on how much protections we need to put in place. I just don't know enough, but you know, maybe there's easy answers for that too. Yes. Yeah, so there is a PPA that we've been waiting for town council to review. I think it's in the queue. And there's also a letter of PPA, intent, PPA. Uh, uh, basically a credit purchase agreement. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a, a credit purchase agreement is in the queue for town council to review. It's already been submitted. And it would behoove us to get a letter of intent with no commitment. We've already issued one for the site to do the second to get in the queue for the state subsidies. Um, just be aware that the federal subsidies ratchet down by the end of the year. And then at the end of next year, they may not exist at all for us. So it makes sense to try to get as much of the solar as we can. Um, although it might extend, we just don't know. I mean, with Mansion, who knows, right? He, he's shooting some of this down. So what's the timeline then, Tanya, for this third party site? So it's as soon as possible, okay. mainly because the state incentives are ratcheting down as we speak. It's just there's a certain amount that you can get, then it goes to the next level down, then the next level down. Mm -hmm. And you'll keep us surprised on that. Yeah, but if we get that letter of intent without, it doesn't have a commitment, if we get that letter of intent to them, they can go into the queue to try to get our spot for the higher benefits from the state. And they just need to have it finalized uh, in enough time before the end of the year that they can do whatever they need to do to be able to get the federal credits under a um, safe harbor clause. Okay. Okay, so this is why I'm saying that sort of we need to deal with it sooner rather than later. Corey. Okay. On the, the third party issue, and just so I understand the the, structure of this. So the agreement really is between us and, and Palmer Capital, right? The, the power purchase agreement. And they're the ones that we still have. We, we do the same thing for the one that's on the landfill, correct? That's so, correct. okay. So we only, it's only one-to-one -one and it's with a group that we've worked with before. And the third party thing that's, that's, sounds like it's kind of between Palmer and whoever they're, they're citing. So we're basically saying Palmer, it's the same deal as before. And you just you find a place to put the solar panels because we don't have space for you. Is that kind of an overly yeah. simplistic way? That's exactly what it is. The other thing about that is the town 
that you can make a decision, but the town does not have to approve a lease under 30B because it's not town land. We're not disposing oh, of town land or acquiring town land. So we're basically lease. just contracting for Palmer for cheaper energy. And That's right. And the town manager can do that. All right. Cool. And in of himself, it's a power supply agreement, effectively. Okay, so that's uh, that. Thank you. That's a pretty good explanation. Any other? Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to weigh in? Any? Uh, yeah, you, you have your hand up, Jack. <laughs> so, somehow you've had your hand up. So. Well, thank you very much. You know, I saw the hand. I was like, "Who is it?" You know, I was, it was getting awful tired up there. You know, I'm just holding it up, holding it up. Um, so, so okay. what we have in the situation, so, Palmer Capital becomes our intermediary. They, they weigh through all of this and they causes money to flow to the town. Yep. Okay. Basically we get an auto, we pay a price and could get a guaranteed credit that's worth more than the price we pay. Okay, all right, but, okay. And you'll obviously, I know you'll keep close tabs on that. And as you know, um, as long as we know in a timely manner to notify people, we'll get you on the agenda as yep. needed. Okay, okay, very good. And then the last topic that we want to talk about is a an unbiased educational and informational tool that we've discovered, um, and that's called Energy Sage. They are a company who simplifies solar decisions. They provide education. They already have a site that does this. They collect information in different locations about what people are paying, who's offering solar energy, for example. They want to expand it to include other things like heat pumps. Um, they pay, supposedly pay for themselves by getting a cut of whatever is sold through their site. Um, but it allows for Cohasset residents to use their site to compare solar energy supplier offers we also, at no cost to the town, can work with Energy Sage to customize a Cohasset specific web page. I will tell you, we're starting to get more and more questions from residents in the town to the Alternative Energy Committee asking us who they should use for solar. And we can't make a recommendation. No. And we shouldn't make a recommendation. But this is a nice location for us to send them to say, well, look, here's an unbiased informational resource that. Um, can provide you with information on how to do this, can connect you with different vendors and different contractors who can provide these services. Cambridge is doing it. They have a Cambridge specific site. Newton is doing it. Lexington and Wayland also are working with Energy Sage. Um, Debbie Cook researched, I, I'm sorry, Pat Gooding. Shoot, I should know which who did this. It was such great work. But um, the Alternative Energy Committee members researched what those towns are doing to make sure there were positive reviews. We, re we received no red flags. And um, the Alternative Energy Committee recommends that we do this and make a specific Cohasset specific site with Cohasset pictures so that we can send people there, have the link going to that site. And it just provides information. Again, timing is of the essence because a lot of the big incentives are going away. And so people in town have around 18 months to do this right now. There may be an extension of some of those credits or there may not. So I think for people in town who wanna to get information so the Alternative Energy Committee doesn't have to provide it because we're not in a position to do so, it would be a very useful information source. Is, is that kind of it? That's it. Okay, let's, yeah. You know, um, we can go back to the uh, regular screen. Okay, let me just finish. Um, so what do oh, we okay. need? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's all right. Timely decisions. We need to complete the pricing on the electric vehicle charging. Town Council can give us some information on what they think might be the right way. And, and we'd like to talk to uh, Town Council about the organizational structures and what the timing would be in the requirements. For the municipal solar, we'd like town council to review the proposed contract, the town manager to send a letter of intent with no commitment. We've already done one, let's do the other site there. And then the select board can discuss the pricing options and decide which approach to take. And lastly, on the residential solar, uh, we do have a memorandum of understanding that was sent to town council. We'd like town council to review that, see if there are any red flags. And then, um, I don't think you're ready to make a vote now, but we would like to hear from you 
if you agree with our recommendation or not, that this would be a useful way to provide more information to the town without putting any of the town committees or individuals um, in a position that they just can't fulfill. And that's it. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I, you know, just off the top, we should not as a town be recommending private third party vendors. Um, there's un, we don't know what the potential legal, I don't see why Sage can't independently set up their own website and go on Cohasset Anchor or 143. And we don't have to be involved in that. And you can just tell people, yep, this is company having that. I, I don't think the town wants to get into that. The history of, of types of, inf of agreements like that is if something goes wrong 15 years from now, <clears throat> we get hauled in on the lawsuit. Um, but <clears throat> the other stuff, I think we, we should consider that. I mean, board members, what are you, are, is there anything that you are comfortable with or should we have some uh, proposals to vote on? We don't have anything on a vote, so we can't vote today anyway. Um, so if we want to give some guidance and we could put it on for some of the basic things that are non-controversial and put it on the agenda for a vote. What is the thought of the uh, select board members, Gene? And then um, Diane. Um, I just had a question about Corey and Diane had their hands up, so. Okay. Yeah. Corey, you wanna go first? You already hand up first. Yeah, no, I've got, it's a very esoteric question. So my apologies. So uh, I do know one of the challenges with charging sites Private charging sites is that I guess that you, you can't charge per kilowatt. You have to because it's exclusive domain of the power companies, right? So do we have that since we're not a power, we don't have a municipal light company, do we have the authority to charge per kilowatt hour? Or do we have to charge per time? No, well? so right now the uh, charging stations are exempt from the public utility rules. So oh, so okay. So we don't have to worry about that. Great. That's correct. So anybody right. who owns a charging station, including municipalities, can charge for the power without becoming a utility. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Good. Just I, I, I think all of these are seem very like right. I want to just hear a little bit more and make some decisions. So I, I feel very comfortable sort of moving forward subject to getting the um, due diligence done that you're working on. Um, with respect to energy save, but it sounds sage, it sounds to me and other municipalities, municipalities are using it, that it's it's really just a kind of a middleman information site kind of that pushes out. So I don't know, but I think in each of your bullet points here, you've asked for a review by town council and I would certainly be in favor of, of town council reviewing each of these three proposals. And getting that happening before we get to a decision making point. Jean and then Paul. I guess my question is who is Energy Safe? On their website, they say US Department of Energy. Are they a third party, a third party vendor that the Department of Energy has retained to provide independent energy, uh, energy information? especially related to solar, and they're currently providing that information across the country. Okay, so they were hired by the U.S. Department of Energy to do exactly what they're doing. Okay, yep. that makes me feel more comfortable with them so long as they're an actual government contractor. <laughs> Paul. Um, I'm a little familiar with Energy Sage. I'm in... Tanya, thank you for all the work you're doing. Um, I'm just a little leery of third parties. I'm in the energy business and they've tried to solicit us. And uh, so I would just ask that council looks into them very thoroughly. They are a business entity, they're in it to make money and um, they pull in businesses like the solar companies and the different ones and they offer different things. They get a piece of the action. And that's how it works. It's like New England Fuel.com. They get calls and say the best price is when the best price really isn't. You know, they're aggregate figures, but they also, you know, they look for the highest bidders they're going to offer and they're going to steer people in a direction that to a degree kind of subliminally want them to go. 
Um, so I would just ask the town council looks into that very well. Just remember, they are a business. They're in it to make money. They're not doing it for the goodness of their own heart. Mm -hmm. Other uh, comments? Um, I would uh, I would really um, be very careful if they're third party and they're in to make money, that's fine. They get rewarded if they're successful. I don't think they need our recommendation to do that. They just have to go um, do a mailing, do a solicitation. There's a lot of interest. And yes, we, we, I think it's possible for, we can pass the word that we think they're good. But I don't think that we want the town getting involved in making recommendations for private party vendors. It's, it's fraught with danger. That being said, um, Getting information, I think, makes sense. Do we have um, do we, do we have anybody in the audience who wishes to speak? By the way, do we have other comments from the select board? Okay, what I'm hearing um, is that what we really uh, I see Paul that, that the wow. board really wants to learn more, um, and there's some degree of uh, not really skepticism, but you know, know what we're looking for. But I think we're pretty much in favor of the directions that you're going. Um, but if the extent that some of the low hanging fruit, the procedure would be that you would probably want to prepare that and, and then we can put it on the agenda for discussion and a vote. Um, Paul and then Diane. Just my last observation, Tanya, and again, I apologize. I would encourage because it does open, you know, either the hard work you guys are doing and the town potentially to be steered in the direction of a certain company or what they're offering or a special. I mean, it is inherent on the townsfolk who want to go the alternative energy route is to do some due diligence on their own. And they pick their solar supplier, they can pick their heat pump provider, and, you know. Uh, and uh, installation, but I would encourage the town or the individual residents to be doing their own due diligence on that. We can provide maybe some windows on where to look, but I wouldn't let anybody steer them in the right direction because we open ourselves up to some blame if something goes wrong. They're making the money. Oh, well, anyway, uh, Jean. Is Energy Sage paid based on leads or based on transactions that are consummated? Uh, they do receive a cut of transactions that are consummated. And there's a study that was done by the Department of Energy that showed on average, they saved more than 10% for residents versus if the residents went and did their own research. It's just, it's a very complicated process. Process and a complicated set of services to purchase, which is why people are looking for guidance. Okay. I think guidance is fine, but I don't know whether we, but anyway, that's for the board to, to decide. Are there any other further um, thoughts on this? So I think, uh, Tanya, that the, my understanding, and I'm sure the board will correct me if they disagree, is that you're kind of going down the right path. There's some things, and if you brought some low hanging fruit that was ready for a, a vote, we would probably the idea of getting people to pay for it. Um, at least beginning that I think makes some sense. When we get beyond that with some issues, probably go going to need further discussions. But I think the board saying, yeah, we like what you're doing, keep up the good work. Um, and we're likely to be, to be receptive to hearing some suggestions that we could make some policy and have a vote. So does anybody disagree with that? Okay, thank you very much. Tanya, as always, um, we appreciate your, your hard work and, and the rest of your committee. We've given you some really good new people, you know, to put at work and we didn't tell them how much work you're gonna make them do because they wouldn't have signed Yes, you did, Jack, yes, you did. Oh, every, every other Saturday, right? So oh. no, thank you. We have a great committee. They're so passionate and so effective, which is why we keep coming before you. And thank you for the opportunity to help make a difference. We, well, we're, thank you. What we're doing. Oh, I did let that every other Saturday slip. Darn. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Thank you. Everybody. Okay. Bye. Very good. Thank you, Tanya. Um, by the way, um, electronic minutes. Um, I think where we are, we're kind of thinking about that. I don't know if there's been any great progress on that. Um, anybody have comments uh, upon that? Um, or we just want to move on to the town manager update. Diane? No, I, I, did, I, I know that Corey did share a sort of a um, outline earlier. I don't know if you want to say anything about it, Corey, but I do no, think there's a, yeah. Yeah, a lot of things. It was a different subject. That was a that, that was a different subject. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, moving on. Town manager update. So uh, just a, uh, a quick update for everybody. Uh, Sawyer Street uh, reconstruction has begun. Uh, the milling began today at the, uh, the eastern end down by uh, Main Street, and uh, the milling will continue all the way through uh, up to 3A. During this process. Uh, the road will be one way going outbound towards 3A. So please make arrangements. Um, it, it, this the whole project will take several weeks. That said, the hope is to have the milling done in a couple of days, and there'll be a first course done, and then some other work will be done until the second final course is done. They have to raise the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the co manhole covers and some of the drains and things like that along the road. So, uh, but we're in it. We're Chris, in it. I warn you that Diane is going to try to interrupt you, but I won't let her until you're done. <laughs> so that's so the, there's there's updates up on the website. Um, there there are police details there directing traffic um, and. Uh, the goal is to have this done uh, before school starts so that when uh, we get back to regular work there, it'll it'll be a brand new road. And this also will, uh, the other pieces will be the new sidewalk at the end that will connect down to 3A. That's going to be completed as part of the, uh, this work. And uh, they're also going to be doing some overlay work uh, on the other work, the rest of the sidewalk that runs on the street. So uh, it's, a, it's a big project. Uh, that said, it's, it's under, this, the, the, the big phase is now underway. And uh, appreciate that it's going to be a little challenging for folks. Uh, that said, um, at the end, everyone will be very happy, I think, with the work that will get done. Diane, and then Corey. Yeah, I just, I just wondered whether there's a specific communication plan for parents picking up at Rec Camp. Um, so Rec is handling that. So they've all been notified. They, everyone was notified last week, and uh, and and Rec is handling that. Um, so. Yeah. That's the biggest traffic um, <laughs> juggernaut. So, <laughs> the, the, so we're in the second session. So a lot of parents have that they were had kids in both sessions. Got to have it down now. That said, Sawyer Street's a challenge when it's two ways. So uh, <laughs> um, that said, it's 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 uh, it seems to be working. I didn't hear any bad reports today. Um, that said, I don't know that they made it all the way up there today. So tomorrow might be a little bit more challenging. Than today. Okay, Corey. I'm not sure anyone can do anything about this or, and I don't know if this is like a specific complaint or just general, but um, <laughs> with Sawyer and then 3A, the town's kind of turned into a little bit of a rat, rat maze or corn maze. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, and, and I don't know if there's a better way we can coordinate this stuff. That way we're not shutting down. I mean, at certain points, it's like impossible to cross town. So, um, you know, I know coordination is difficult, but just bringing that up because it's been brought to me by people. So. No, I understand that these are three entirely disparate projects, right? Because I, I just come into town, I have to do that, right? Main Street is alternatively shut down because uh, National Grid's doing gas main work. Um, there's a sewer project going on on 3A. And then this is actually the completion of work that happened last year, right? So National Grid did all that gas main replacement, and then the town's doing the sidewalk. Uh, it, it wasn't planned that they would line up this way at all. Um, Unfortunately, they have. The only good news of it is that when they're all done, and uh, it, it will, the roads will be in much better shape. Now, that said, the Sawyer, Sawyer Street's the one that's being fun. They're in the final stretch. That'll be all repaved, and I'll be good for the for the school year. The, the north end of Main Street, North Main, will not be fully repaved till next year because they have to let the, it settle over over the year. But I don't think it'll be in that bad. Hopefully, not in that bad shape. And then 3A, again, will also not be fully repaid for, for a year or two either. So um, hopefully the, the work that will be done will make a nice and the patch up clean. Um, so uh, th that said, it is a challenge. These were not planned this way. And uh, by the way, there's another one starting soon. That's Pond Street. So um, that's a national grid uh, 
project that they're accelerating rapidly that will also be done at least the first phase of it by school so that Pond Street will be uh, uh, movable. One of the challenges and, and it, just one second, uh, Chris, before I lose the, the thought, um, I, I think we probably ought to have an overall thing on the website on this and and we can, you know, I because people are going to be asking and we probably should have a link right on the front page. It'll save um, it'll save us all a lot of time, but I think it will save the staff um, a lot of time. So if you could arrange that, that would be very helpful. Um, that's a good suggestion, Jack. Uh, there is one there right now, specifically about yeah. Air Street. Um, and I was talking to Justin about doing at least a very a weekly update, uh, probably at the beginning yeah. of the week so everybody knows what to expect. Um, uh, one of the challenges that we faced is it, it, now, it, several, several years back, Coasa was ranked as the highest per capita gas leak place in the state of Massachusetts uh, with nothing that was deadly, but there were little leaks all over the gas lines. The, the National Grid's finally getting around all of that. The, the bad news is that the pipes are under, under streets mostly. So the good news is that when this is all done, most of it will be complete. Um, and uh, again, I, we really appreciate everybody's patience. Um, that said, uh, Soy Street is in progress uh, and that the other projects should all be wrapped uh, well before school starts. So when traffic really heats back up again, I think we'll be in better shape. No, thanks. But but again, we'll get Justin to have something so people could say Sawyer Street is doing this, North Main is doing this, and you're probably going to have to update it um, almost on a daily basis. And I think even though I don't want to have Justin have a lot more stuff, that will save a lot of time because that when when people ask a question, you can say it's on the website. So anyway, comments. I don't see any hands raised. Okay, anything else, Chris? Thank you very much. Um, select board comments. Um, I'm just going to look at my screen and um, Gene. And then we'll go Paul, Corey, Diane, and myself. Gene, you're. Yep, I'm getting ready to talk. My comment. Uh, okay. Just a reminder, next week, select board meeting next Tuesday on just zoning, on our zoning goal. Learn more about it then. FYI. OK, are you done? OK, Paul. Um, I don't have too much by way of comments. I think, and Corey, you might help me out on this, that the meeting is tomorrow morning at 9. So am I, do I have that correct? Yeah, that's just for you and me. That's for the, um, the, uh, uh you, no, you I, the that's a, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, that one threw me a curve because I thought we were going to set that up later. Okay, um, that's, um, we can discuss that offline. That's nothing wrong with it. I'm just asking. Oh, Corey. no, it's, it's because yeah. executive wrong. session. Just trust me. Um, the, uh, Corey. Do you have anything else, uh, Paul? No, we'll see you tomorrow at nine. Okay. Sorry. Um, yep. Yeah, so uh, the uh, we've got a state primary coming up, and you know we'll you'll see some of this stuff being socialized, but I'll bring it all to you here because I think a lot of us, basically all of us, got the uh, vote by mail uh, application. If you fill that in and you get a ballot, you can still drop that ballot off here in town at the drop box here in town. So you don't need to necessarily mail it back. You can still do that. It's not like if you choose that road, you can't hand it in. Uh, and then early voting will begin on uh, Saturday, August 27th. Uh, and then obviously uh, the election uh, date will be like the week after that. But there'll be a whole uh, schedule uh, posted on our website for that through the clerk's office. So, because there are changes this year uh, and uh, you know, everyone should know about them. So any questions, happy to, to share what I've uh, researched. Thanks all. Um, thanks, just a couple of quick things. One is um, Tracy, if, um, if it's possible to give us a list in our next packet of committee openings that are still out there still outstanding. I know, I believe there's some associate members on CONCOM and I'm sure there's others um, 
that haven't been filled so that we can do what we can, you know, over the next couple of months to try to populate the committees, especially um, as we may be recruiting for newer new committees going forward. Um, when we were talking about the website, just in terms of hosting the uh, road um, challenges, one of the things that I've always thought should be on the website, um, and, and maybe it's the the you know the new revised um, update page, which is part of the calendar. I think we should add some of these um, permits that we've um, given out. So because you know we give permits to a road race, and and there it isn't necessarily because it's not a town event. Um, on our website other than through the minutes. So I, I do think if there's any way to add, you know, weekends where people are going to be inconvenienced, you know, going to the dump in the morning or whatever, um, it's probably worth getting those up there, especially the ones that are on the road. Um, so we don't take it by take people by surprise. And then lastly, just something for us to think about and ponder and maybe have a discussion in another meeting, which is whether and when we want to consider going back to hybrid meetings. We're one of the few select boards um, in Eastern Mass that aren't meeting in person. Um, and I I totally value the hybrid um, option for, for all of us. So just something I think we should think about. Um, and then whether that spills over to our hearing boards or elect other elected boards, it's just something, a bigger conversation I think is worth us having. That's it. Thank, Thank you, Dan. I mean, the, uh, the comment that I would have is pay attention to the zoning. We're doing a lot of work on that. If you can tune into that, be very helpful for people to, to know that. It's, it's really very crucial. Um, but aside from that, um, I just think again, and I've said this before, but when you watch uh, a group of people like your select board members who everybody has diverse interests and constituencies and people that we listen to, but we all understand what we really are here is to remember the oath that we all took to do what's best for Cohasset. And, and I really am so impressed with the ability of people to work together, compromise, listen. Listen carefully to what your fellow select board members are saying and understand that they're saying that for the same thing, reason that you are, they're trying to understand what's best for our town. Very impressive. And um, what else can I say, except chair would, most, would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Okay. I do want to say there's been no, topics reasonably with a 48 hour deal. So we don't have to worry about that. We have a motion made in second to adjourn. Uh, roll call vote, Jean. Jean Haley Dippel, die. Paul. Paul Grady, aye. Corey. Corey Evans, aye. Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Jack Creighton, aye. This motion, this meeting is adjourned. Good night, Thank everybody.